I can podcast all day. It's harmless phosphorescence. Hello, everyone. This is Throw Smiley, and I have a detonator in my meat tube. Who's joining me this week? <laughs> I'm Josh Cece. I don't care. <laughs> they say sarcasm is a metric for potential. If that's true, I'll be a great man someday. I'm Brian Lesh. Multiple contusions detected. I'm Alaric Weber. <laughs> and this is Harmless Phosphorescence. It's a podcast where we watch every theatrically released full-length live-action superhero movie ever made. We gather some research into the production and the source material, then we tell you all about it. This show is brought to you by our patrons, patrons like executive producers Michael Beckwith and Atticus Burkett. You can be a patron too. Just head over to patreon.com slash harmless entertainment. We've got lots of bonus content there. We've got Star Wars stuff, holiday shows, music shows, Simpson shows. Um, our monthly movie, which is non-superhero related, comes out once a month. Oh, and this month, guys, I forgot to tell you last week, we've got our uh, pick for the month of January. We are going to be watching JFK. Break. <laughs> we're, we're all four movies. Point. We're going to be watching JFK Point Break. It was a mashup. <laughs> was, well, you you laugh, but JFK is in that movie, at least that's, in mask form. <laughs> that's right. Um, it's uh, so. Um, what happens is uh, that Jack Ruby has to go undercover as a surfer. <laughs> he looks like a surfer. <laughs> um. So, yeah, Point Break this month on our monthly movie. Check that out, everybody. Um, Buck a month is all you need to get started. This week, though, on Harmless Phosphorescence, we are watching Captain America Civil War. This job. We try to save as many people as we can. Sometimes that doesn't mean everybody. But you don't give up. New York. Washington, D.C. Sokovia. Okay, that's enough. Captain, people are afraid. That's why I'm here. We need to be put in check. Whatever form that takes, I'm game. I'm sorry, Tony. If I see a situation pointed south, I can't ignore it. Sometimes I wish I could. Sometimes I want to punch you in your perfect teeth. I know we're not perfect. But the safest hands are still our own. to watch their back. This doesn't have to end in a fight, Tony. You just started a war. Stay down. Final warning. I could do this all day. All right, I've run out of patience. On to Ruth! Hey, everyone. Captain America Civil War. Woo! Um, that was a trailer. Uh, released May 6th, 2016. Uh, took, uh, directed by Joe and Anthony Russo. Cost one... Cost two hundred and fifty million dollars. Took in one point one billion. Um, wow. So yeah, <laughs> another big hit. Um, I mean, it was a basically Avengers two point five. It was like yeah. a Captain America 
movie really a name only yeah um but well, there uh, were no there was no thor or banner that's what stopped it from being a full avengers movie is the lack of thor and banner um and what was it i think uh chris Hem- chris hemsworth said when he um heard that he wasn't going to be in civil war he thought he was getting fired from the mcu i bet i bet it's real touch and go with those people yeah. uh, but it, it, you know it makes sense narrative wise because why would a god or this guy who can't control his alter ego sign a document you know what i mean like but what, what yeah well, would that yeah. make yeah well i yeah i mean they're they're both way too overpowered to be part of this story well way. and and banner at that time banner could sign something but he doesn't control the hulk so <laughs> well yeah exactly and thor's not even from earth so what does right, he yeah. care his laws <laughs> yeah um so yeah this was a big hit at the box office which means it's time for us to play the box office top 10 game this is the game in which i will describe the uh top 10 movies of the week of may 6 2016 the fellas here are going to try to guess what movie I'm describing, and uh, you are ready to run on down the list here, fellas? Oh, yeah. Here we go. Coming in at number 10 for this week. <laughs> uh, two men's moms have the same name. Batman v Superman. I knew it at the <laughs> chuckle. Yep. Still in play. <laughs> yep. Number 10. I mean, it, was, it wasn't a total... It wasn't... <laughs> A failure. Just oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, I meant it in terms of this movie, like how, oh, how closely they came out. Oh yeah. How long has it been since Batman v Superman opened in theaters? About two months. Uh, not quite two months. Month and a half. Okay. I just wanted to establish that up front. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Um, it's crazy these came out so close together. Well, and right, and we'll, we'll we have points to make about that, but like obviously nobody was ripping each other off because they were obviously made in tandem. Yeah. So yeah, exactly. It's very interesting the similarities. It is, it is, and it's very interesting to see what the different uh, the different studios, the what directions they went. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. Okay, coming in at number nine. Oh my god. <laughs> When the galaxy comes under the threat of a nefarious space captain, a mechanic and his newfound robot ally join an elite squad of com- combatants to save the universe. I had no idea that's what this was about. But I've, I've heard of this movie, but I, I, have, I've, I know nothing about it. It's animated. Um, it looks, I don't know, what is this? Blue Sky, Sony, it's hard to say. Something... One, one of those off-brand CGI studios. Um, Ratchet and Clank. Oh, that was oh. a video game, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, hmm. Yeah. Their, uh, <laughs> their tagline is, Kick some asteroid. <laughs> some dude bought a house. Oh, God, yeah. Made. Well, that's like, you guys have heard about the guy that named names... Pixar movies, right? Uh, no. Oh, I think there, I have heard about this. There, there's one guy. I don't know if it's the same guy all along or if they like changed that position, you know, throughout the years, but there's one guy whose name is who, whose job is to name the Pixar films. And um when he named cars, <laughs> he got a two hundred thousand dollar bonus. Two hundred thousand dollars <laughs> for the oh. word. Cars coming to you from the same man who named Toy Story uh, a Bug's Life. Yeah. Okay, but at least those are you know titles. But then he he got to Wally and he must have been hung over or something. He's like, right. what's the character's name? Wally. All right. Yeah, Wally. Like, <laughs> send. Oh <laughs> uh, God. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, coming in at number eight. <laughs> Where does the house go? Goes up. All right. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, number eight. A titan of industry is sent to prison after she's caught insider trading. When she emerges ready to rebrand herself as America's latest sweetheart, not everyone she screwed over is so quick to forgive and forget. Looks like the start. Oh, Melissa McCarthy. Oh. Barbara oh. Newhart. I don't know. 
<laughs> the, Fl- the Martha Stewart sh- story. Flanders McFlanagan. Um, <laughs> Fletch. Um, it's it's one of those ones that's like, like, the, and a word. Oh, the spy. The cool, the cool spy. Well, except she's not a spy. She's she's the cooking lady. <laughs> she's the boss. Oh, that's what it's called. The boss. The boss. So is this a gender bent Bruce Springsteen biopic? <laughs> <laughs> Melissa McCarthy is Bruce Springsteen. Bruce Springsteen. <laughs> I would She's watch like, that movie. Baby, I, would totally watch I was it. born to run. <laughs> but not very fast. Not especially fast. Uh, Kevin, it at number, what are we on? Seven? Something like that. Yeah, number seven. Um, ooh, as their surrounding community has taken a turn for the worse, the crew at a local business come together to bring some much needed change to their neighborhood. <laughs> this is a sequel. It might be like the third one. Oh, was it Barbershop 3? I it, I don't know if it's three, but yeah, it's Barbershop, the next cut. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Barber, yeah. <laughs> revenge, revenge of the flat top. Yeah. <laughs> Numbers. Did they, uh, did they make a director's cut of Barbershop at any point? The original? Uh, the director's cut. The director's cut. No. no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sal. <laughs> I'm coming in. Thank you, Thoreau. <laughs> that was a thinker. <laughs> <laughs> coming in at number six. Uh, bunny and fox must fight wolf. <laughs> Zootopia? Yes. <laughs> uh, at number five. Wait, hang on. Um... Zootopia was on our list for Batman v Superman. That's still it was. kicking around theaters. Zootopia yeah, it was did a well. humongous hit. Yeah. Um, strangely humongous hit because I did watch it because I had children and I was like, why is this? Like, it's not a bad, but it's not like, it's not like Wally or up. Like, it's not that level. Oh, well, yeah. It can't compete with Pixar, but yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I didn't get it. Um, <laughs> uh, you, you well, didn't get it? Anthropomorphic animals? Yeah, not for me. <laughs> like, but, <laughs> wow, it's not, a slow burn. Because there was way too like much. Bunny. Th- there were way too much sexy animals in it. <laughs> it was just like yeah, it made me feel real uncomfortable. And a large section of the internet, it made them feel way too comfortable. <laughs> Yeah, um, I'll, st- I'll stick with Maiden Marion from uh, Robin Hood. I was yeah, going to say, like, that's a big furries movie. Babs. Oh, uh, she, well. Chicks yeah. love Robin Hood, like, straight up. Hell, well, in Space Jam <laughs> the, with well, uh, yeah. Babs. Oh, Lola. Yeah. Lola. That's right, not Babs. Yeah, that's right. People were rabbit. upset that she was not as sexualized in the new version. <laughs> yes. It's like. <laughs> what is like what like is like we waited is, 20 years to jerk off to this what are you doing guys Lola really let herself I, go i promise yeah. i promise you guys that there's plenty of like bunny porn on the internet if that's what you're really looking for Bro, <laughs> there, how, how can you make this promise <laughs> <laughs> I'm concerned. Uh, i mean it's the internet. I assume there's plenty of if, every porn. Yeah, if you think yeah. about it, it exists as pornography yes. on the internet. But absolutely, yeah. somebody's done it. Uh, number five. Um, two guys are looking for their lost kitty. Oh, Keanu. Yes. <laughs> That's yes. right. This is a yeah the Key and the Peele, Peele, movie. Peele movie. Yeah, mm-hmm. like the the only one they made together. It's weird. Um. Yeah, it was it was good. It was funny. It was fun. It, yeah. it was a long sketch, but it was good. Um, the uh, <laughs> speaking of Keanu, has anyone else watched The Matrix Four? Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. You haven't yet, Josh. <laughs> yet. <That's laughs> or you're cute. not gonna. Okay. No, probably not. <laughs> okay. But go ahead. Um. Just what the fuck? <laughs> That's all I have to say. I didn't hate it. I thought it was fine. It was an interesting 
thing that happened. It, there was a lot of stuff in it I liked, but just overall, I was left really wondering, like, what is this thing that is happening on screen? So I don't want to... I don't want to get too deep into the Matrix 4, but I am running into the assumption that it was, if you don't make it, we will make it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because that is explicitly stated multiple times in the movie, and it's super meta. Make, make yeah. the Matrix? Yeah, yeah. Like, if if uh, one of the Wachowskis did not make a Matrix follow-up movie, Ooh. they would have just made one without them. Ooh. Right. That That's literally... Because they own the property. It's literally stated in the film as a metatextual um, yeah. line. They say, if we don't make a fourth one, then War- then our parent company, Warner Brothers, will. That's yeah. like almost a verbatim line. <laughs> they they yeah. name check Warner Brothers. They're talking about the video game version of the Matrix in the universe. Yada, yeah. yada. But but that's why I'm like, oh, okay. All of that being considered, I'm like, oh, that makes it so much better than it being a, a an honest to goodness, we're revisiting the Matrix so so my take is I loved all the metatextual stuff and I loved a lot of the commentary about the current state of the internet and all of that. But just looking at it as a straight in-universe adventure story, it is so weird and bad. It it reminded me of uh, Endgame with the time heist. I just kept calling it a mind heist. Yes. It was like, this fucking mind heist story is weird, man. Really weird. And I still don't understand why the whole conceit of the movie exists as to why Neo and Trinity had to be in the matrix. Like I still didn't, don't feel like we got a satisfactory explanation for yeah. why and how they're better batteries, I guess, <laughs> but they're not the only two batteries. <laughs> There's like yeah. all the other people too, Battery. but all the other people won't work unless they're there. Like, well, I don't, I don't think that, I don't think that that's what they were getting. At. I just think that they get a lot more juice out of those two than they do many, many, like uh, they're probably worth a million or something people or something for them to have all that infrastructure. Anyways, mm. join us at our matrix podcast in 10 years when we they make a fifth one. We may someday get to it. Um, depend because we've only got about, uh, about, uh, uh, 10 and a half months of superhero movies left. Um, so, Scary. um, uh, number four on the box office, top 10 game, uh, Eric and Sarah, <laughs> Raised Sarah. As, <laughs> Eric, Eric and Sarah, raised as members of the Queen's army, try to conceal their forbidden love as they fight to survive the intentions of both the Queen and her sister. <laughs> what? Uh, bees. <laughs> <laughs> Is this like Enchanted or something? Or not Enchanted? What's the other one? This one does, of those movies. Oh, oh, hey, look at that. Chris Hemsworth was in the box office top 10 this week. <laughs> the Huntsman? Huntsman 2, Winter's Still War. Hunting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, number three. Three generations come together in the week leading up to a holiday. <laughs> Naturally. The stars. We got Jennifer Aniston, Julia Roberts, Kate Hudson, and Jason Sudeikis in the whitest movie ever made. <laughs> uh, Mother's Day. Whoa. How'd you do that, Al? Wait, really? That's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I knew it was a holiday. Character. I just thought of a holiday in May. That's it. You got it. <laughs> Someone made a Mother's Day movie. Wow. Wow. We should we should do Finally. a we should do um, a holiday movie <laughs> for every holiday. There's a movie for. <laughs> we got born on the Fourth of July. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh God! Well, I mean, Fern Gully was kind of an Arbor Day. <laughs> there you go. Um, <laughs> that have you guys seen New Year's Eve? That movie is Oof. hot garbage. Um, we, can, n- we can do all the Rockies for Boxing Day. <laughs> uh number what is this two or three number two um after an antagonist forces him to flee a young boy embarks on a journey of self-discovery <laughs> oh yeah we all took that journey <laughs> um this takes place in a jungle oh not a bathtub um, it is a remake jungle book a- Yes, Jungle Book. That one wasn't bad. Oh, is it the John Favreau one? Yeah. 
Yeah, that was all right. That one, as far as Disney live action remakes goes, that one was pretty all right. Um, and of course, number one, political intrigue causes a rift between <laughs> Captain America and Iron Man. <laughs> Two star-crossed lovers. Yeah. Uh, number one, that is our box office top ten game. Uh, that brings us to the uh, character and comic book background. Al, we've seen most of these people before, but do we have anyone new to talk about? Um, yes, we do. Um, I'll get to him in a minute. <laughs> um, wanted to talk briefly about uh, Civil War in the comics. Ooh, okay. Yeah, that one's... Which that one? Something. Uh, the first one. Okay. Um, I don't think I ever read any of the Civil War two story. It's a mess. Line. The it first is. Civil War is a mess too. Yeah. It was not a good run. It's one of the few modern, like more modernish Marvel runs I'm familiar with, and it was bad. It and was. It it kind of polarized critics, but um, I, I feel like uh, overall it got good reception from readers. Yeah, mm. I thought it was all right. There's interesting but, moments. Yeah, but... that's not great. Sure, there's interesting moments, but then there's things like <laughs> Black Goliath's death <laughs> and funeral that is just like, well, oh, that's not good, guys. Yeah, yeah. that was brutal. Robot Thor. <laughs> oh, um, what was it? Clore, <laughs> they yeah. called him. The, oh, that's yeah. right. He's a clone of Thor. He's not the a robot. robot clone of Thor. Yeah. Or yeah. a robot clone, which is somehow worse than either of those stories. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Civil War was a 2006-2007 crossover storyline consisting of the seven issues Civil War limited series written by Mark Miller and penciled by Steve McNiven, along with various tie-in books. Um, I just found out that, um, one of those tie in books was, um, ultimate civil, well, I'm sorry, ultimate spider ham civil war number one. Oh. Okay. Well, now that, that's awesome. That, why didn't they just adapt that one? <laughs> <laughs> um, which now I want to go find and read, uh, anyway. Mm. Uh, the storyline built upon events in previous Marvel storylines, particularly Avengers Disassembled, House of M, and Decimation. Um, I like House of M. Yeah. yeah. Actually, I actually have that one, yeah. The U.S. government passes the Superhuman Registration Act, ostensibly to have superpowered individuals act under official regulation akin to law enforcement. Superheroes who oppose the act, led by Captain America, find themselves in conflict with its supporters, led by Iron Man. Uh, Spider-Man is caught in the middle, while the X-Men take a neutral stance. Um, Doctor Strange just says, uh-uh, don't call me. Mm -hmm. Like, literally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um... Superheroes who support the law, including Mr. Fantastic and Ms. Marvel become increasingly authoritarian. They ended up uh, building a, a prison in the negative zone for uh, the superheroes who did not support the act. Yeah. I, so, I mean, it's, it's, it's the whole thing is essentially an allegory for the war on terror, complete with a superhero Guantanamo Bay. <laughs> Like, yeah, mm -hmm. black black site prisons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, black site exactly. Uh, Civil War explores the conflict between freedom and security against a backdrop of real life events and discussions such as the U.S. government's increased surveillance on its citizens. The series culminated in the eventual surrender and subsequent assassination of Captain America by a brainwashed Sharon Carter as well as the appointment of Tony Stark as the director of S.H.I.E.L.D. Mm -hmm. Also, don't we get uh, Spider-Man almost getting killed, getting shot by crossbones? Oh. I think so, yeah. Well, oh. and not only that, but like like Tony gaslights Spider-Man into revealing his identity on national television. And then yeah. crossbones yeah. shoots him. Yeah. And yes. Then, uh, yeah. Crossbones was hired by Kingpin. Um, 
missed Spider-Man and killed Aunt May. Oh. Well, because Spider-Man gets carried into the sewer by Punisher. It's a famous shot. I think mm-hmm. that's from Civil War. Yeah. So maybe is. the bullet went through Spider-Man or through Aunt May and hit Spider-Man. I forget. I'm not going to go back and reread it either because it was not great. <laughs> was this storyline before the Illuminati? Um, I don't remember time wise. Yeah, because time-wise. that would be pretty hilariously hypocritical. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and well, it's at it's such a Bush era thing too because at the end when Captain America is about to um uh is beating up Tony, uh he's stopped by a bunch of firemen and EMTs and policemen. The first responders are like, "Don't do it, Cap." Yeah. And he's like, "Out of my respect for America's first responders, <laughs> I'll step down." Cap's a real fascist in the comics in that era, man. He is a real government stooge. Oh. Yeah, well, got some yeah. Superman vibes. Yeah. There's even a hearing. Yeah. Um, Helmet Zemo. Our our new character to this movie. Um, first appeared in comics under the alias of Phoenix in Captain America number one hundred sixty eight, December of nineteen seventy three. Created by Roy Thomas, Tony Isabella, and Sal Buscema. He is the 13th Baron Zemo. The barony of Zemo dates back to around 1480. Helmet is the son of Heinrich Zemo, created by uh, Stanley Steve Ditko, I think. Um, didn't write that down, just. That sounds right. Though. Yeah, <laughs> had to pull that, gotta, me- pull that gotta- from memory. You got a good shot at that being correct for any <laughs> Marvel character from the 60s. Um, Heinrich Zemo uh, was a Nazi scientist who created the super glue known as Adhesive. <laughs> I'm sorry, oh. Adhesive X. Uh, yeah. There we go. And, and he, yeah, so he basically like hodgepodged his mask to his face. Yeah. <laughs> uh, when Captain America destroyed the Nazi supply of Adhesive X, the glue... Adhered Heinrich's mask to his face, permanently affixing it so. <laughs> Heinrich was responsible for the bomb plane upon which Captain Cap and Bucky met their respective fates. Cap being frozen in ice and Bucky eventually becoming the Winter Soldier. The bomb plane? The bomb plane. The, the bomb bum plane? Is that like bum fights, but with a plane? <laughs> plane? <laughs> Holy shit. I was thinking Bump. butt play, but uh, oh. you know, our brains go totally different places. Yeah, I'm usually thinking. <laughs> um, the first appearance of Heinrich Zemo was in a flashback um, in Avengers number four, I think it was. Uh, or, yeah, I think it was number four. I could be wrong. But uh, all we really saw was his hand, like, as. Cap and Bucky are like jumping onto the plane. We just see Baron Zemo's hand, like ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. Bomb. Um Helmet first surfaced. <laughs> helmet. Helmet. <laughs> helmet Zemo. First surface surfaced to take revenge upon Captain America for the death of his father, Heinrich. It didn't go well, as Helmet ultimately fell into a vat of specially treated (laughs) Adhesive X. (laughs) How ironic. Scarring his face. So many vats. So many vats. Yeah, I was just going to say, in the vat, like, okay, it's Star Wars, like Marvel, like comics. So many places just need guardrails. Guardrails would solve so many issues in sci-fi and fantasy. Those high curved, uh, you know, they put on bridges. So you can't get over and, you know. Yes. OSHA you doesn't go. exist in fiction. Well, I love, like, this is a, a super almost otherworldly adhesive and no cover. We don't store it with a cover on <laughs> You can just drop things in, fall in, like it's a science pit. <laughs> the science. Don't fall in the science pit. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably a bird. Um, I, I neglected to mention that the... Uh, this vat of adhesive X was specially treated with electric eels. <laughs> <laughs> what happens when you stick a bunch of eels together? <laughs> yeah. 
Um, no, no eels. Uh, anyway, it uh, scarred his face into the appearance of molten wax. Um, thus, he took to wearing a mask most of the time. Helmet Zemo would take up with the likes of Arnim Zola, Mother Superior, and Red Skull. He I heard that Mother Superior um, got ahead of herself and jumped the gun. Yeah. <laughs> well noted. <clears throat> <laughs> I think Mother Superior was the daughter of Red Skull. Yeah, yes. I remember yeah. from the comics. Yeah, she was a killer nun or something. Um, Helma Zemo would form the fourth incarnation of the Masters of Evil. Well, as we've discovered, there's a lot of killer nuns, notably in Canada. <laughs> yeah, that, I love. The... Sorry, that wasn't actually funny, but anyway, <laughs> I love the uh, Masters of Evil comedy tour. <laughs> they made a concert film. That was good. <laughs> okay sorry had to blow my nose uh zemo is a scientific genius skilled strategist master combatant and eventually gains superhuman strength and slowed aging by possession of alien gems known as the moonstones <laughs> not the secret soldier serum that was probably so available to him and they yes. kept it in a vat <laughs> why didn't he fall into that vat I know it's like damn <laughs> the awesome vat was right next to it yeah so many people fall into vats that give them powers <laughs> I fall into a vat of glue and he is a genius level intellect <laughs> um, and a genius level klutz because he keeps falling into vats of things <laughs> At least, once, at least once. At least once. I was I was gonna uh, talk about Sharon Carter, but then I started looking at um, her bio on Wikipedia and realized that we did talk about her sufficiently um, in the the Winter last Sol Captain Amer in Winter Soldier. That's right. Yeah. Um, I think I think that was it. Yeah, Black, Wait, so. Black Panther, we're going to be leaving for the yes, Black, yes. Panther. Yeah, Black Panther. Yeah, I was going to say, we got to at least say Black, we're going to talk yes. about Black Panther yeah. and Spider-Man again when we see them again. Yeah. First, I mean, yeah, I hope we don't go through Spider-Man's history again because we have oh, no. <laughs> many times, but Black but, yeah. Panther definitely will be talking about in depth for the Black Panther episode. That will yeah. be Parents got shot after that watching little. that movie or something, right? No. <laughs> yeah. Pearl. We've seen it a dozen times. Yeah, pearls scattered in the floor. I mean, we're going to have to talk briefly because it's a different universe. Yeah. Entirely. Yeah. And then his planet exploded. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. His, his parents were killed coming out of a movie as the planet exploded. <laughs> <laughs> they sent Bruce away naked as a the eyes of a clown. <laughs> they sent Bruce away inside a giant bat. The eyes of a clown. Uh, yeah. oh <laughs> Don Brian lyric. Uh, what? Well, don't you remember? Cal's fucking naked. Richard Donner. Oh yeah, with, uh, yeah. We yeah, got baby penis sure. in the movie. Yeah. So, but, so Bruce Wayne was inside a giant bat. <laughs> Sent from yes. Gotham Planet, the planet of Gotham. <laughs> they sent him to the other side of town. Yeah, yeah they like, just don't. shot him across the bay in a cannon. He's yeah. like, ah, oh, you found my only weakness. It's a stone called Gothamite. <laughs> <laughs> my only weakness is the planet exploding. <laughs> so, all right, all right. Thank you, Al. That is our comic book background, which brings us Thanks. to the section of the film. This movie, as I mentioned, was directed by the Russo brothers. We spoke about them previously on uh, Winter Soldier. Uh, written by Marcus and McFeely. We spoke about them previously in Winter Soldier. Um, starring Chris Evans as Cap. We, uh, Robert Downey Jr. as Tony Stark. Scarlett Johansson as Natasha Romanoff. Sebastian Stan as the Winter Soldier. Anthony Mackie as uh, Sam. Don Cheadle as Rhodey. Jeremy Renner is Clint and our new cast members. We've got Chadwick Boseman, rest in power King as the uh, Black Panther T'Challa. Um, Chadwick Boseman, uh, uh, as I'm sure we're all aware, passed away from colon cancer last year. Um, he was diagnosed with colon cancer um, during the, uh, promotional tour of this film 
Oh man. Wow. Yeah. And that's gotta be brutal. I I live with Crohn's disease and it's pretty rough. Ugh. Yeah. Man. But he shows kept you how pro- tough this dude was. Yeah. Right? He went yeah. on to make the so like yeah, just watch Black Panther. He he was undergoing treatment for colon cancer during the entire filming of Black Panther. Like fucking this dude is awesome. Wow. Um yeah, that's amazing. Um, yeah, born born November 29th, 1976. Shout out to me and Al's birth year. Um, passed away August 28th, 2020. Um, that, <laughs> that really brings it home because he was the same age as me yeah. and Al. Um, mm-hmm. And pretty close to you too, Josh. Uh, uh, I finally uh, got to see a, I finally got to see a superhero in the movies that was the same age as me. Yeah. Finally. Yeah, there, there's been a bunch that are younger and older. I don't know how old that raccoon is, but I kind of identified <laughs> with. <him. laughs> I I identified a little too closely with Howard the Duck, but um, oh, always <laughs> love Howard. Um, Chadwick Boseman got his start um, in uh, 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 soap operas. Um, uh, All my children, specifically, that was his first uh, real national gig. Um, he played Roger Porter. Um, he did a bunch of TV spots. He was in Third Watch, Law and Order, CSI, all the regular, all the the you know the go to things that up and comers do. Yeah. Uh, his first film role was in The Express, the Ernie Davis story. Ernie Davis is from the town my family's from. There's a high oh. school named for him. Oh wow! Wow. Um, so yeah, uh, he played Floyd Little. Um, his kind of his, his breakout was playing Jackie Robinson in 42. That was, that was uh, so in, good. That was a yeah, yeah. That was in 2013. He was in Draft Day. He played James Brown in Get On Up, Incredibly. which I haven't seen, but that sounds awesome. It is good. Yeah. yeah. Um, he was uh, oh he was Thoth Thoth in Gods of Egypt. Um, that came out the same year as Civil War. Um, after this, of course. We'll see him again as Black Panther in three more films. Um, and of course, his final final um, uh, Black Panther was in a What If, where he voice acted. Um, he was recording that as he was dying. Like, my God. Wow. <clears throat> he was, uh, his final uh, on screen performance was in Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, in which he uh, mm-hmm. received an Oscar nomination. Should have won, but you know. Um, we have, let's see, Paul Bettany was Vision, Elizabeth Olsen was Wanda, Paul Rudd as Ant-Man, Emily Van Camp as Sharon Carter, Tom Holland as Spidey. We've got our new Spider-Man. Um, how exciting that was. I wish yeah. they hadn't revealed him in the trailer. I remember uh, thinking uh, that at the time. Honestly, though, it got butts in seats, man. And just oh, having oh, you yeah. say, just having him say two words. Hi, everyone, is a that's great it. way awesome. to introduce Spider-Man in a trailer. That was yeah. amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, oh. I, it's crazy how young he looks compared to No Way Home, even though he's only supposed to be like he two still years. Yeah, but he still looks young. But I, I know what you mean. I want to say he was 21 when he was cast. 96. He was born in 96, so he would have. Um, he would have been 20, 21 20. when the movie came out then. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you, you you grow up quite a bit from twenty to twenty five. So yeah. we've seen him, you know, yeah, become absolutely. more of a man. Absolutely, he looks fifteen. Maybe it's his height. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. He's got um, he, he's got boyish looks, definitely, and he'll look like that mm-hmm. forever. Right. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, he's part of the great English tradition of uh, upper elite prep school kids going into <laughs> the entertainment industry in Britain. Yeah, uh, so Hogwarts is that's where it went. Uh, uh Middle like, Earth. Um let's well <laughs> it was it was actually uh let's see, he was born in Kingston upon Thames and was educated at um the Donhead Preparatory School in Wimbledon, southwest London. Um uh, he's a rich kid, you know. I don't know what any of those things mean. That that's how rich it is. It means is. he was a rich upper class British kid, is what it means. Yeah. Uh, Mm -hmm. but, um, he joined, um, he got, so he joined as a child, the nifty feet dance school 
at um, the hip hop crew at the Nifty. <laughs> I can't imagine how hardcore and street the Nifty Hop Nifty Feet Dance School hip hop crew in <laughs> London is. <laughs> in, Woo! Um, in at, Wimbledon. In Wimbledon. In Wimbledon. <laughs> the Nifty Feet Dance School. Um, I'm sorry. I just got, there's a picture. Of, on wikipedia of him <laughs> in this and it's just him and a bunch of other like white kids and they're all like "Ooh, we're dancing <laughs> but he, he went on and he played uh billy elliott in uh the west end for um a while that uh of course got him noticed because there's only 14 people in england um <laughs> <laughs> well because we can't have we can't have americans playing these roles no <laughs> wake up <laughs> um so yeah but um then he started getting some uh <laughs> he got some um yeah andrea said i hope zendaya gets some shit about that all the time me too the hip-hop crew yeah <laughs> uh, <laughs> nifty feats with the attitude um so yeah uh after that he started getting some film roles he was in something called the impossible how i live now lock billy elliott the musical live <laughs> Um, then his uh his uh kind of screen role that got him noticed on this side of the pond anyways was in the heart of the sea which apparently was critically praised but i've never seen it is that Um, the lighthouse one i don't i think oh no that's a different guy that's christian oh yeah Yeah. i don't know but um yeah so uh we will of course be talking about tom holland more as spidey in a number of films um then we have Frank. It also introduces us briefly to Aunt May. Yes. yes. Marissa Tomei, hot single. Yes. Marissa Tomei as Aunt May, who I was getting to. Um, (laughs) Former girlfriend of George Costant. No, they didn't actually become. Um, She got her start on As the World Turns in the uh, 80s. Um, And then. Didn't uh, didn't she get her start in uh, Toxic Avenger? Yes, we did talk about her in Toxic <laughs> oh, Avenger. Yeah, she she, ha- she had, I think, a scream. Did she even have a line? I think, I think she, she just screamed. And yeah. She was in like the locker room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that video store or something. Yeah. But uh, yeah, she was a uh, she was an ongoing character on As the World Turns. Then she got um, kind of her. What brought her to national prominence was um, her role on A Different World. Um, hmm. And then, of course. Uh, what was her big break was my cousin Vinny. Um, she got an Oscar um, for that one. Um, and that's, yeah. I mean, it's my cousin Vinny. <laughs> it's, a, yeah, that's, okay. it's a fucking great she, movie. She's incredible. And that cat suit is also incredible. <laughs> yeah. yeah. She looks great. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, absolutely. She's insanely gorgeous. But um, let's see. Frank Grillo was back as Brock Rumlow. <laughs> Frank Grillo, who insists that Brock Romo is alive, like in interviews still. He's like, you haven't seen the last of him. He's coming back. He blew up in front of us. Yeah, he's going to be a robot that's got his dust inside it. I mean, he appears in Endgame. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, it's not impossible. I mean, we have a multiverse, so. Oh, right. It's the past. I wasn't trying to say, you know, like, is he alive? But, yeah, he managed to get in the last one. Yeah. Uh, so then uh, William Hurt is back as Thunderbolt Ross, that motherfucker. <laughs> Human houseplant, William Hurt. Yeah. And Daniel Bruhl as Helmet Zemo. This is an interesting one because I knew nothing about this dude. Oh, he's great in Inglorious Bastards. That's obviously where that's, I That's That's the only thing I know him from. But He's like he, the Audie Murphy, the Nazi Audie Murphy. Yeah. Uh, but he, he is a German. Um, yeah. <laughs> He, he's an actual German. He um, just doxed him. Yeah. <laughs> um, and he is considered um, in Germany to be one of the greatest living German actors. Wow, he's young. Yeah. Wow. Um, he's yeah, he's only 43. But um, yeah, huh. he he's considered to be one of Germany's greatest living actors. Um, he's <laughs> he's been working. I mean, it's since, Germany. Yeah. A lot. yeah. He's been in like his his list of credits is insanely long and the entire first half is just german movies um we have schlaraffenland <laughs> <laughs> um, Studenhotel. 
Schul, <lacht> nix Bürgern. <lacht> Dein Klassen war 99. Such a language. <lacht> yeah, so. Uh, hey, I know there are more. Keep reading them. I'm having a good time. This is great. Uh, more guttural, though. Yeah. Um, Schul war gestern Leben ist jetzt. Der letzte Flug. Um, the new batch. Oh. <laughs> he, he voiced he voiced um the character of Kanai in the German dub of Brother Bear. <laughs> yeah, he did. He was in Was nutzt dein liebe Gedanken? <laughs> oh, he was in that. Oh, good. God bless you. Das or should I say Gesundheit? <laughs> Die fetten Jahre sind vorbei. Um, Joyach Noel. <laughs> he he was Lightning McQueen in the German dub of Cars. <laughs> so That's cool. Wow. Like if the state produced vehicles still. Um. Wow. Yeah. So that's an interesting. That's like a good gauge of like where he ranks as far as like in Germany itself. Um. Oh, Brother Bear too. Um, he was in the Born Ultimatum, as far as uh, you know, English language movies go. Of course, in Glorious Bastards, um, the Two Days in New York. Um, was he had a TV show, The Alienist? I think. Oh, uh, oh yes, he was yeah, Doctor yeah. Laszlo Kressler. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, I he like, was. I read the first book. No, yeah, in The Alienist, and of course, he'll be back. Helmut Zemo will be back in the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. When he does his little meme dance, um, there was and, a movie uh, in the eighties with uh, Timothy Hutton and I don't know. I think Sean Penn. Anyways, the Falcon and the Snowman. Does anybody remember that? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, whenever I, I hear Falcon, I think that's what. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we have John Slattery back as Howard Stark, Carrie Condon voicing Friday, Martin Freeman as Everett K. Ross. We got playing uh, an American. Yeah, yeah, doing a slightly better thinking. American accent than his uh, buddy from Sherlock, uh, Benedict Batch. Cumberbatch does. I, I don't know. I think his is more disturbing than Benedict Cumberbatch's. That's just me. I think I'm it's, the only one with that opinion. But it's, every it's time funny. I hear him talk, it's weird. It's, it's jarring. It's weird. It's weird. He has a very subtle British accent. It's very, you know, like John yeah. Watson's clearly British, and he sounds it, but, like, it's not thick or dialectic. It's almost like what an American would speak. But yeah, you you know it's an interesting movie when Martin Freeman is the least interesting character. I don't oh, know. Absolutely. I, lo I love the guy. Absolutely. So um, let's see. Alfred Woodard uh, as uh, cameoed. Um, the cast on this is just insanely large. Gene Farber as uh, the Hydra official who oversaw the Winter Soldier program. Um, uh, John Canny as T'Chaka. Uh, Jim Rash. Oscar Oscar winner Jim Rash yeah. um, playing the uh, MIT guy. Um, the, who's the, making the self Halton. cooking hot? Was down. he playing the dean of MIT? <laughs> yeah. <he was. laughs> oh my god, he kind of was. <laughs> um, are are you kidding the... about him winning an Oscar? Did no, he really? He won an yes. Oscar for writing um, the that George Clooney movie that was set in Hawaii. Oh, the Descendants. Descendants. The Descendants. He won an Oscar for screenplay for The Descendants. Yeah, which is basically a true story, mm -hmm. but, but with and, real Hawaiians. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's real Hawaiians. <laughs> um, Andrea's aunt's sister married into that family, the royal family. Yep, and as uh, Andrea just mentioned, Hope Davis as uh, uh, Mrs. Stark. Hope Davis, of course, she was in. Um, well-known actress, uh, probably biggest in the nineties. Um, although she was in about Schmidt American splendor, but, um, uh, she's, you know, uh, well-known actress flatliners, um, mm -hmm. home alone, kiss of death. Um, yeah. Hope Davis. Um, yeah, that about rounds out our cast, a huge, huge cast for this one. Of course. Um, um I just want to know one person who is missing from this. Because we already talked about Banner and Thor being missing. Where the hell is Nicholas Fury? Where is Sam Jackson in this movie? What was he doing? Do, do they say that's a planet? What, well, no, he wasn't off planet yet because the next time we see him is Infinity War where he gets snapped. Yeah. We don't see him again till then. Anyways. So, so he was in New York at that time with Maria Hill. 
Yeah, it's I mean, he's still in hiding at this point, but we we never get a satisfactory answer for where because he doesn't seem to be in hiding during Infinity War anymore. Yeah, in he fact, doesn't he do seems- anything ever again. What movie? No, but what movie is it where there's a post credit scene where he uses the Captain Marvel beeper? That was Infinity the end of War. Infinity War. Yeah, 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 yeah. right. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah, when he gets snapped, as he's getting snapped, he presses the beeper. Yeah, because uh, he fakes he fakes his death in Winter Soldier, mm-hmm. and then disappears. He burns all of his stuff, and then he reappears in Age of Ultron. And then and we then, don't we don't see him again until the Infinity War post credit sequence. Yeah. yeah, I mean, he didn't want to be a part of this, maybe. Yeah, it's I, just, I'm just curious about what Sam Jackson was doing at the time. That's that's kind of a weird. <laughs> he was thing. making he, eleven other movies. <laughs> yeah, because he he loves these movies. It seems. Yeah, I don't think it was. I think they just didn't write him in. I think maybe they just thought there wasn't a narrative place to put him. Would be my guess. Well, he'd be arrested, right? And he would oh, definitely yeah, yeah. be um, privy to the um, accords. Yeah, absolutely. Not privy, but like, what's the? He he he'd, he'd fall be involved. Under, yeah, he'd, well, he'd, he'd fall, take a side. Yeah, he'd fall under. Yeah, he would fall under the the uh, uh, jurisdiction of the accords. Right there, you go. For sure. So, um, this movie has ninety percent on Rotten Tomatoes, and uh, guys, that brings us to the uh, the film, the breakdown. You ready to jump into this thing? Yagatova Kavash. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, I said it wrong. Ready to comply? (laughs) Yagatov Ovechash. Yagatov Ovechash. Ready to comply, Al. So, here we go. This is Captain America Civil War. We open in 1991. Nirvana is breaking. George Bush Sr. is president. (laughs) The number one movie on, or the number one television show is Seinfeld. Actually, it wasn't in 91. (laughs) But anyways, in Siberia, the Winter Soldier is activated through a series of code words. He's given a mission. He runs a car off the road with a motorcycle, opens the trunk, finds a briefcase full of Dawn dishwashing liquid in IV bags. He brings it back to his handler. I want to say I love the mystery of this. I remember watching this movie and being so confused until it made sense until all of a sudden this little breadcrumb mm-hmm. made something. Yeah. It's yeah. really clever. Compare this to I, I'm going to open we're opening the Bat, Batman versus Superman salvo. The stakes of this. Yeah. This is our my mom's name is Martha moment being mm-hmm. established the first thing that we see in the movie. Right. Yes, absolutely. And actually, the the mother thing is what um, Bucky uses to prove to Cat, like your mother's name is Sarah. You oh yeah, we even get Sarah's mom. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, the mother thing. Like, there's, uh, there's so this film is so well written. Yeah. So well written. So, yeah, like you were saying, breadcrumbs. Like, so the crux, Bucky is the crux of the, well, and then comes down to being, you know much bigger um so yeah you know taking the time to get you to care about these characters that you already cared about but you already cared about batman and superman and they didn't give you that yeah yeah satisfying and and this this part the siberia visit to visits to siberia in 1991 do two things which is really cool and we'll talk about that as we get more of these but i just wanted to say that out front like they did such a great job to open with this instead of absolutely 15 minutes in, we get a shot in 1991, you know, yeah. for the first time. Well, and it opens cold. We don't get Marvel before this or anything. It's just boom, yep. 1991. And yeah. we're going. Wow. Um, so, yeah, uh, we get the Marvel logo after this scene. Then we cut to present day in Lagos, Nigeria. Cap, Wanda, Natasha, and Sam are staking out a science type place. Um, they're hunting uh, Brock low. They're staking out a police station. Yeah. Oh, that's right. That's right. And the yeah. the science type places down the road. Yeah. The Center for Infectious Disease. Yeah. 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 Um, so uh yeah. Brock arrives. <laughs> Brock. <laughs> Brock. Uh, <laughs> Brock. <laughs> he attacks, he gets a biological weapon. The Avengers work together to try to stop them. 
Brock and his guys flee through the city with it. And in the end, Natasha retrieves the weapon while Cap confronts Rumlo, who activates a suicide bomb. Wanda manages to use her powers to contain the blast and fly him up into the air, but she doesn't hold it inside her force fields long enough, and it explodes the uh, upper middle floors of a building, causing the death of innocent bystanders. And develops her character. She's still young. She's so powerful. She doesn't yeah. even know how powerful she is. No, well, she does not. And, okay, so I don't want to minimize the deaths of the people that, you know, these fictional characters that died that kicked off this whole Sokovia Accords thing, but I'm willing to bet that there were less people in that building that died than there would have been in the marketplace that died. If 100%, that vile, yeah. but they were politically important people. Yeah. Which yeah. adds to the the level of this this disagreement that we get into, this philosophical <laughs> idea that the UN gets to choose who and what they fight for. But, right. Yeah. Well, and so, I mean, that's the thing, though, too, is like the, the it's a legitimate question. What right do these people who are mostly American citizens have to simply enter another country and right. start whether they're yeah. overpowered or not, With whether they only have guns, like, like Natasha? I, mean, well, she, I don't I assume she's I don't know who <laughs> I don't know what country Natasha is a citizen of, but no, she, mm-hmm. she doesn't fly any flags at this point. <laughs> yeah, but um yeah, but like what what right do they have to enter a country and blow stuff up? Well, and also, you know, like you said, it was just sort of w- one or two floors of this building, probably not all that occupied. But again, it's bringing it home that the MCU is our universe. It's where we live and they're responsible and accountable for their collateral damage. Yeah. As opposed to say Man of Steel. Uh, <laughs> they just destroy a city and the only person really mad is Batman. Right. Well, yeah. I mean, Man of Steel was basically 500 911s all at once. So right. So you know what I mean? Like these heroes are held accountable. I yeah. know they tried to sh- to make Superman accountable, but he basically showed up to say you can't make him. Well, and it's really interesting cuz we'll we'll get to Secretary Ross later on, but the idea that they <laughs> that they don't have any guilt around what happens immediately after this explosion happens. You see Cap guilty. Yeah. You see Wanda them, yeah. guilty. You right. see everybody in that situation is like, oh, fuck, what have we done? And it's like you've saved hundreds of lives and caused collateral damage. That's it. Yeah, exactly. And, so- and they, you know, it's like, OK, well, Sokovia, I mean, that was Ultron. Oh, yeah. But uh, Tony, <laughs> yeah. are you responsible for Ultron? OK, so, yeah, let's 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 be clear that in Age of Ultron, Tony Stark became a villain, not oh, yeah. not not mm-hmm. not a misguided hero. He just straight up became a villain in that. Yeah. Well, he made I, a I, unilateral I, the, con- the consequences of his actions basically created him becoming a villain i don't think that he chose to become a villain necessarily well like no. any good villain including thanos he thought he was doing the right thing yeah. absolutely yeah, his intentions were were good but the he didn't have between, a time for a speech from cap the space yeah. between tony and thanos is very small yeah. very small that's why they do the same thing yeah yeah um but i mean and so uh what was the point i was just about to make a point so oh um and also his motivation in this film we come to find he's not as much worried about doing the right thing and what he thinks is right as he is trying to do two things that are both incredibly selfish motivations, assuage his own guilt and uh, get pepper back. He's trying to get pepper back while being Iron Man. And this is the way to split the difference. Right. Cause his he, words. Does, he can't, he can't stop using his, he can't stop his addiction. Mm-hmm. So he thinks maybe if he shows Pepper that he's using using drugs responsibly, she'll still come back to him. Right. That's a good way to put it. Mm-hmm. I wanted to give a quick shout out to Galena. Thanks for watching. Oh, well, thank you. Galena, you say? Galena, I think so. Is, Is fun fun? That oh, that's that's spam. <laughs> <laughs> That's that's a bot that that spam us. Oh, <laughs> oh uh, that, that's a shame. Yeah, I, I, I thought she was maybe appreciating my attempt to rush. Well, no, she, was. no, no she, she wants she, in a she data wants farming you to click that link now. <laughs> she wants us. Yeah, she wants us to click the link and look at some porn. That's what she wants. Lesson learned. It's a uh, fair request. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, click the link, look at some porn. I mean, there's worse things. <laughs> I've done it for less.
So, all right. Um, we cut to MIT. Tony is demonstrating a holographic memory thingy he made that has some rather disturbing DH Robert Downey Jr. in it. Um, Honestly, I love the de-aging of him. Yeah. All I, but all I could see is Suitcase Boy from SNL. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I yeah. love how this thing comes back. It's just brilliant. Well, and this ties again to our December of ninety one. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. without us knowing, we right. don't yeah. know it. This is the last time I'll ever see them. I wish I had said something. It won't yeah, change. So blah blah clever. blah. Yeah. Um, Tony is working through the trauma of his adolescence or is his he's an adult at this point his his young adult life um adult yeah yeah the idea that you fight with your father until you can't anymore and then you're just like fuck there were so many one things of i wanted to say yeah <laughs> yes. oh dude dude yeah you know Absolutely. like i should have said i love you when i was defensive because he was yeah. an asshole. yeah 100 yeah. percent. that's dads and sons like motherfucker yeah. um yeah, so we're working through it on the show right now. <laughs> <laughs> Constantly. Uh, so yeah, it's showing the last time he saw his parents. Uh, we learned that he and Pepper broke up on his way out. Well, he's in a really subtle way. We learned that he and Pepper broke up. Yeah, we see him look at her name as he's supposed to introduce her as the head of Stark Industries, mm-hmm. and he freezes. They did such a good job of of showing and not telling. Yeah, this they, is this is a really incredible thing because mm-hmm. they could have been like, oh, you know, Pepper Potts, she runs my company. She's not here. He could have said something. He could have said something to someone off screen. There, yeah. Now, yeah. this film, there's a couple seams showing in the actual filmmaking. And some of that just has to do with like aging technology. But um, for the most part, this I mean, this this is one of the best written superhero movies ever made. Like it's incredible incredible there um, is no loose thread but everything at this point in the movie feels like a loose like just like oh this doesn't matter none of this there, is important you know, there, were, a gobbledy yeah. Yeah. there were a couple loose threads that i thought were loose threads that on i right, was googling right. and found out they weren't loose threads i just missed some details hmm i'd be curious yeah. to hear what those are Good uh, thing i'll talk the podcast I'll talk, i mean yeah first time i saw it i missed that um t'challa was in siberia at the end oh yeah uh-huh. Cause, but they do it in like old mystery movie type fashion like his shadow moves back behind and then oh, you see yeah. him running in the background oh, yeah. at one point well yeah 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 you, you yeah he's just there's a couple yeah. scenes where like you know they, they, they have a couple cutaways to him but there's a couple scenes where he's just in the background here and there at like he watches them fight a couple times yeah and does nothing <laughs> um yeah, which, which was an interesting thing for T'Challa to do. Be like, I'm staying out of this. Well, that was his attitude all around. Well, at, at that point, and we're we're getting ahead of ourselves, but at that point, he had figured out the whole thing. He's smarter than all of them. Yeah, one hundred percent. Of course, yeah. yeah. As far as like Peter? diplomacy and people go. Yeah, My yeah. He's not as... wasn't that Peter, where he's like, I'm Peter Parker, and he's like, I don't care. Yeah. No, that's that's uh, Clint Barton. Mm. Oh, yeah, that's right. I'm Clint Bar- Yeah, we haven't I'm met. Clint. I don't care. Yeah, I don't care. Um, so, all right. Um, on his way out, he's confronted by the mother of a man that was killed in Sokovia during the events of Age of Ultron. And not uh, also, and she I'm may- sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say, she may also be the villain from uh, Luke Cage. That's right. Hot, she was hot in- mouth sister. Yeah, al- although I'm, it's real questionable. I mean, that's that may be a different multiverse at this point. It's hard to uh, say. Yeah. But no, yeah, well, it's just cool that Alfred Woodard got two roles. Yeah. And uh, Tony had to be confronted to have empathy. Yeah. And then and then he used this kid, you know, and Cap is sitting there like, okay, I'm sorry that that kid died. But, like, I can't individually name all these people. I have to save as many people as I possibly right. can. I mean, because Tony, Tony knew that tons of civilians died. Like he knew well, he was an arms right? dealer. He was responsible for that, the death of innocent people. I think that Cap had been grappling with his guilt around what happened in Sokovia because it was their biggest failure by far. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Right? This whole time, whereas Tony is for the first time dealing with yeah, it, even though finally. it was all his fault. 
Yeah, I mean, well, it hurts Cap's heart to Tony. It's a fuck up. Right. Yeah. And, and and that's a good point, Josh, that like he has to be confronted with it before it yes. means anything to him. Right. And he does it's, these charitable acts to, um, like you said, assuage his guilt and his. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, he's a classic narcissist. Unless yes. it's happening to him, it doesn't mean anything. Well, and the cognitive dissonance of a guy who spent his life and his father did too, arming people. Mm. and arming the whole world bad guys and good guys and so yeah it's just like you, he has to ignore he, that he almost spent a billion dollars to work on his daddy issues which mm-hmm. his father died mm-hmm. at this point what 25 years prior to this yeah meanwhile he has n- done nothing to work through his guilt around killing hundreds of people maybe thousands of people in sokovia as collateral damage mm-hmm. yeah that's quite a bit yeah, it does. Um, yeah. Uh, well, and yeah. So, um, well, actually, this is a slight unanswered question, which I never had, or which I didn't actually write down. But um, so, how big is the country of Sokovia? And did they destroy the entire country? Was the entire country just that city and the surrounding countryside of that city? Well, it reminds me of what's that. Uh... What's that nation that's Lichten, real tiny, smaller Lichten, than the Vatican? Yeah, oh, like or Luxembourg. Andorra. Oh, Andorra. Luxembourg? Luxembourg. Luxembourg. It's like Luxembourg. I assume that Lat- uh, Latveria is the same way, mm-hmm. where it's it's, or, it's 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 like a mountain with a castle on top and like villages uh, down the mountainside kind of thing. Mm. Or that, that was my Monaco. Monaco. Yeah, that's yes. Yeah, yeah, like I pictured it as one of the like Soviet satellite countries after the yeah. Republic broke up. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But like so tiny that there's just one major city and maybe a few small towns around the city. Right. It's actually yeah. drawn by ethnicity more than geography. Yeah. Not unlike Wakanda, which is a tiny nation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Okay. I'm going to, sorry, we're on the geography part of the podcast now. Again, I'm going to go back to Batman versus Superman. <laughs> we were introduced to a country in Batman versus Superman called Nairobi. <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> Why not use a place called fucking Nairobi that exists? Yeah, it's not copyrighted. Uh, you can say that word if you'd like. So we have Sokovia and Wakanda. They're yes. the two fictional places that exist in the MCU. In this yeah. movie, we go to... Vienna. Oh my God! Yes, we go to uh, where? Where were they? They were in Lagos, Nigeria. Lagos, Lagos Nigeria. Uh, they yep. go to Berlin. They London. go to Siberia. They Lipsig. go to London. They go to Bucharest. <laughs> well, and that's <laughs> where all don't of these. Exist. All of these places are in the real fucking world. Yeah, they were they not are. afraid to use real places and Although, insert two countries, especially instead when we, of the opposite. Especially when we get to the, um, as we get to the end, though, one of my big unanswered questions is traveling. Yeah. (laughs) Traveling time. (laughs) And um, the the amount of teleporting that takes place that makes Game of Thrones look realistic. So I think that the Quinjet goes into space and comes back down from space at this point. I don't think That's, it's flying through the atmosphere at all. But Tony that, decides to take a helicopter from upstate New York, Westchester, wherever the mansion is now, and fly to Siberia in a torrential sleet well, storm. Well, he, he flies <laughs> to the raft, the which the raft, oh, as far as raft. I understand, is outside of New York. It's always okay. been in the Atlantic, somewhere uh-huh accessible from New York because that's how the villains always escape and they always go to New York first. Kind right. of okay, all right. I was he flies in an Iron Man suit yes. from the helicopter. We're talking yeah. about this, so let's I I, yeah. I was gonna bring this up later when we get to it, but we're talking about it. So just real fast. In the time it takes from uh, for uh uh Cap and Bucky to go from Germany to Siberia, Tony takes Rhodey to a hospital, gives him an MRI goes back to New York, goes to the raft, and goes to Siberia. Like, yeah. how yeah. how slow does the Quinjet go? <laughs> but again, not as frustrating as in uh, Superman and Batman, because like I said at the end, Lois is at that funeral, 
then Batman's able to go to the prison, deal with Lex, and come back, and she's still at the gravesite. She, in fact, <laughs> threw the she threw the sand or I the am, dirt onto it. I am more willing to forgive these gigantic back chasms in distance than I am willing to forgive those short distances between right. what. Well, you know, yeah, because Bruce is back there Gotham as well. and uh, his hometown right. in Kansas. Well, like, well, yeah, because flying these gigantic, because because this, despite all that, is is narratively satisfying. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't interfere. Yeah. So, all right, all right. So, uh, we cut to Avengers headquarters. Cap and Wanda are watching news. We learned that a group of Wakandan emissaries were killed in the blast in Lagos. It was their their opening salvo to the world. Like, we're Wakanda. We're here. Get used to it. Their outreach. Well, yeah. and they haven't yeah. announced that they are a technologically advanced nation. No. At this point. Just no, that they, they have vibranium. Have they even announced the vibranium? I don't think they've announced We that. We get to the vibranium in the speech from the king. Because mm. he mentions oh, that right. stolen vibranium was what caused Sokovia. That's right. That's right. Okay. So, um, yeah. Um, so uh, Wanda, or everybody blames the Avengers. Wanda blames herself. Cap blames himself. Vision shows up, tells them that Tony's arrived with Thunderbolt Ross. <laughs> um, <laughs> with his dyed black mustache. Yeah. So we Thunder- know later on his white mustache means he's gotten older. You can't tell from this fucking blob. <laughs> he's right, the he's- actor that we have, I think. Yeah. Oh, yeah. By far. Ever. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, Thunderbolt Ross is now the Secretary of State. He informs the Avengers that the United Nations is going to pass the Sokovia Accords. 117 nations have signed. Um, how, many, s- how many nations are there in the United Nations? Do we know? I don't have that off the top of my head. Um, I know low hundreds is the general number of nations on Earth, but I don't know the exact number by at all. Low to mid hundreds is the number of nations. Um, uh, 193. So how many nations oh, signed? 130. Oh, I think they I'm signed. Curi- I'm curious who didn't sign. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Probably the Soviets. They're like, yeah. fuck you. We have superhero you never hear about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think they have an appointee. Didn't Khrushchev bang on the... Oh, no, no. The, uh, the Soviets are in the UN, but they may not have signed the uh, Covia Accords. Oh, oh Russia, the Covia Accords. Right, yeah, right, yeah. Right. That's, that's what I mean. Like, who are the people, the, the nations in the UN that were not signatories? Yeah. Gotcha. So, um, all right. So, uh, let's see. He um, <laughs> tells them that uh, they're going to meet in Vienna to sign the Accords uh, in three days. Uh, the team has to talk it over and decide whether to sign or disband. So, there's a moment here. Where he mentions the Hulk, asks where the Hulk is, Hulk and uh, Thor, Thor, and both of them, um, and uh, says, "If I misplaced a three megaton bomb, you can bet someone would have to answer to me." Does this motherfucker forget that he personally misplaced the exact person he's talking about for three years? Well, well that's why he knows what he's talking about, and also that the nuke question. If we misplaced a nuke, you motherfuckers almost launched a nuke at New York City, and these people in this room are the reason why New York City didn't get nuked. That college in upstate New York, that they destroyed. Thunderbolt Ross has a or lot to answer for. What's well, left he, of it. Knows, yeah. he knows yeah. that Banner has no control over the Hulk. So he also knows what we were saying, that like you, it doesn't matter how many laws you write. The fucking Hulk and Thor do what they want. Also, the the if if I were to lose a 30 megaton nuclear weapon, did I say nuclear? Nuclear <laughs> weapons? Sorry. Yeah. I got George Bush <laughs> rattling in my brain. Um, the United States government, uh, I don't know if anybody knows this, we have lost nuclear weapons off of carriers in the yes. Pacific. They have rolled off the fucking deck and are sitting at the bottom of the ocean. Yeah. And you know what? Uh, a lot of stuff. Nobody was held liable for it. No. Well, we have sure. made all kinds of nuclear mistakes. As the United States, and not talking about Three Mile Island, like, yeah, nobody's responsible or held responsible for any of this shit. No, and again, it's a subtle like it's not illegal when we do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. And we're going to tell you when you can. But again, he's using it as an example the exact person he personally lost. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And of course they wrote that line in so that we would get the explanation as to the, you know, Thor and Hulk were not around and they won't be in this movie. Yeah. yeah. It was that. It's a great little scene. Cause then they shoot to um, Tony and mm. just, there's something about Robert Downey Jr.'s, <laughs> Downey Jr.'s, um, eye movement in this scene because he's not saying anything he's absorbing the vibrations in the room and so like he's he's looking very solemnly at ross and ross says the nuke thing and he looks over at cap and then looks back it's just very dramatic yeah <laughs> cool. yeah he is um, uh what is it uncharacteristically non-hyperverbal yes right. yeah yeah exactly uh so we cut to cleveland <laughs> well, and then he uses the kid right or is that Cle- later on Cleveland is another location. Jesus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We we cut to Cleveland. Uh, Bucky's old Hydra handler is hiding there. I guess if you're going to hide somewhere, Cleveland's a place to do it. Oh, my God. Have you? There's a documentary about him. Have you heard about the Nazi? And he was caught. um, Oh, yeah. In the 70s. But he had been living in Cleveland, started a whole new life and family and everything. And then somebody recognized him as this brutal guard from Doc Gow, I think. The wow. Russos are from Ohio, so I assume that they probably uh, heard that story and right. tied that into I'm this sure movie. It was famous. Yeah, yeah, because like that's where you'd want to low key, <laughs> probably. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Uh. Baron Zemo arrives, takes his Winter Soldier instruction manual, and kills him when he won't give him more information. <laughs> I, uh, I love so so Zemo's plan is incredible because this is the fast way to it. Mm-hmm. Mission report. December 1991. If you're not going to tell me, I got to use your fucking book, man. Just tell me. That's It's interesting to me that he is trying the easy way first. Yeah. yeah. He wants to do it the easy way. He can't. Okay. I'll do it the hard way. He's and it's hard. Bloodthirsty. It's hard to catch that on the first time that like he's not trying to get the book from the guy. He knew he had the book. But he also knows this guy has the same information as a winter soldier. Right. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And well, uh, Zemo in this is as a character with characterization, Z- he's pretty flat, but that's as it's written. But also um, his motivation and his plan. It, I mean, his plan is like spot on clockwork. Z- well, we find out that he's special forces at the end. Yeah. Yeah. You know, So he's kind of no joke. And I bet they tangled with Hydra. A good amount. Yeah. Yeah. In that well, and He's very Batman in this moment because he says to yeah. the guard, I have experience and preparation. Yeah. Or experience and patience. Mm-hmm. And with those two things, you can do anything. Mm-hmm. And that's like Batman. Given enough prep time, Batman could beat anybody. Zemo is literally Batman in this movie. Yes. Oh, <laughs> well, yeah. And if you are confident and assured enough, you can walk into any room. Yeah. That's a Bruce Wayne fucking thing. And that's not because he's a billionaire. That's because like, oh, oh, you've been waiting for me. Yeah, Yeah. (laughs) exactly. Well, and what, what, um, yeah. What's, what's, I just had a point that I lost. Um, Zemo. No, it's okay. It's okay. Um, so, um, yeah. What's really, ah, oh, well, maybe I'll remember it. So, all right. Um, back at Avengers, um, headquarters uh the team is arguing about whether they should sign or not tony Rhodey, natasha and vision are for it cap and sam are against it cap gets a text i'm surprised he knows how to text that <laughs> he that doesn't respond to them he just forever. gets them that's true and we did see him get a text in winter soldier um, um i just I, this is really interesting the the first time that we have the philosophical discussion around the accords it is, there's banter, it's back and forth, it's kind of playful. We get uh, the two military soldiers, the guys who served, who actually served, not not including Cap, but Rhodey and Sam Wilson. Sam, yeah. They're yeah. the ones who are making this discussion. And we see this whole thing escalate at later points in the movie. Um, but, but that's how it starts. But we know that Tony and Pep have broken up, so Tony is emotionally unstable. Mm-hmm. Right, and now we see that Cap's love of his life has died, so now he is emotionally on his back foot, mm-hmm. right. which is an interesting thing that we don't really get. They they don't talk about it later on, mm-hmm. really. Um, Cap or Tony does to Cap the next time they talk, 
but that's it. Like, it's not like, well, my mom, I feel sad. I feel guilty, whatever. Yeah. It's just there. It's just in the movie. Yeah. It's not them like bitching well, and moaning about it. And they don't really make a point of it, but Cap is in that room. One of those people is a hundred years old. Like Cap probably oversaw the uh, you know, evacuation of camps in oh, shit, yeah. in 45 mm-hmm. and 44 and shit like that. So like being on a list means something a little more to that dude. Right. Well, yeah. so but okay, but all right. So all right, here's a good I think this is a good time to talk about it as good a time as any because it's throughout the film but um so the obviously when this was made this was from the obama era so things we can and it plays with themes that kind of run throughout the 20th century so yes obviously there's there's a lot of like um world war ii stuff in here especially because we got cap so there's a lot of things like being on a list like you were just talking about josh things like that um, government oversight there. Tony clearly in this film represents the military industrial complex. Yes. And their, their yeah, overreach yeah. and their control um, for now. But at the same time, post COVID um, watching a movie in which a person thinks that they have the single best personal point of view and they're going to do whatever they need to do, despite what the big bad government is telling them is for the common good. Rings and that's a great story. I, I think this is different though. And I don't want to get too deep into the COVID thing, but the government is, is using science and they are, they are propping up peer reviewed science. This mm-hmm. is very much the government is trying to hold individuals responsible for their actions, which is subtly different in this, in the motivations of the government trying to do the thing because collateral damage happens, you know? Yeah. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, that's the thing they cut when you have COVID, if you go out in public with it, you can get other people sick, other people who maybe are going to die from it. Even if you don't, that's fair. If if you're a superhero, you're going to go out and you're going to stop the bad guys, but some, some other people maybe are going to die who aren't superheroes. And, um, you know, it's also that um, meta- parable of of fascism and power. Like uh, Cap has seen fascist rise and how quickly it happens. So he's seeing this as fascism. However, he's ignoring any sort of facts or points of view of anybody else. He's making his own decision. His own decision could put lives in danger. Mm-hmm. And, you know what I mean? So he's a little fascist himself. 100%. Yes. I think Cap is just as stubborn and possibly fascist as Tony in this. Well, mm-hmm. and and you had mentioned the Ayn Rand thing in our texts. Yeah. So the controlling an individual is very different than controlling a population. I hate yes. to I hate to dr- draw that weird murky line in the sand, but but controlling individuals and making them become extensions of the government is interesting when you compare it to like, Oh, this is a population, a public health measure. Like they're not making every single human being sign the accords as a public health measure kind of thing. They are making individuals who are exceptional sign and they are forcing them to, which is really that again, it's murky because what's the difference? Like you make everybody sign without their vote. Which- or you make a few people sign without their. Well, vote. here's the thing, though, is that you know, at a certain point, when when is Amazon and Facebook and Microsoft? When are they going to have to start signing treaties and accords? And that's going to be Jeff Bezos, and that's going to be Mark Zuckerberg, and that's going to be fucking Elon Musk that have to do the signing. They yeah. they are the cap and the Tony, like as far as their yeah, impact on the, the government, world. right? Yeah, for, especially for sticking with the Ayn Randian concept of of exceptional right. creators or and whatever. here's the thing because it's not so much about them as individuals it's about the fact that they wield a power that can affect huge swaths of the population mm-hmm. yeah. so that you can't it, it's hard to argue that you have to just trust that the person that can wield this incredible power is always going to know the right thing to do with it well and it actually would have worked better if they went with the comic storyline in that respect like if it was a registry kind of thing more than this accord that says you'll wait for the government to tell you when you can well um, well, i mean 
I think the I think the big distinction between the comic Civil War storyline and the MCU Civil War storyline is that in the comic they were mostly um, masked and unknown to the public. Right. Where in this, other than Spidey, everybody knows who all these people are publicly. That's a good yeah. point. Um, yeah, and well, and it it leads the not just being a registry leads to Cap's point, which is they're going to tell us what not to do. A. But mm-hmm. also they're going to tell us what to do. What if we need to choose? What if we need to do something and they don't let us? What if they make us do something we don't want to? Which is the which is the real crux of that debate is like, mm-hmm. what if they tell you that we're going to take over China? Like, holy right. shit. And I'm not sh- going to take over China, you know? And well, they show th- Cap th- in Lagos. And as soon as that explosion happens, he's like fire and rescue. Like he's on it. Yeah. So he's, he's thinking, do I have to wait for a fucking text from Ross before right. I can move to the next step of this? Right. Well, that's true. But also the, 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 the part of this that Cap conveniently ignores is not that you have to sign this or you're a criminal. It's you have to sign this or you have to stop taking these unilateral military actions. Right. But we are introduced to our, our brand new Spider-Man in this movie. In the words of Uncle Ben, with great power comes great responsibility, and and mm-hmm. gr- evil is not enacted by uh, what is what's the Martin Luther King quote, but by men who choose to do nothing. Right in the it's face not, of evil, by, yeah, it's, it's actually not men who do evil; it's people who see evil. Yeah. Yes, and, th- and that's actually a real. I, it's really interesting that Spider Man, who is on Tony's side in this film, um, actually sums up Cap's side in a single sentence when you're. When you see when you're able to stop the bad things and you see the bad things happening and you do nothing, then it's your fault. That actually sums up Cap's side perfectly. And Spider-Man mm-hmm. is the perfect encapsulation of this disagreement because we also see Tony being incredibly hypocritical by bringing a child to a battlefield yes. who is not yes. a signatory of the Accords. He does yes. not make he does not say, kid, I just need you to sign on the dotted line, then we're going to Germany. No. He just goes, no. You don't have a passport? We're going to Germany. This is going to be sweet. Yeah. Well, and and also Tony. Tony's a real dick to Spider Man because um, one he dog he he like talks shit about Spidey's homemade tech. Like mm-hmm. you should be impressed by this, Tony. Don't be All an right. ass to him. Right. Well, I hate to say it. That's kind of Tony. He kind of yeah. talks shit as a, his form of affection. He either yeah. talks shit yeah. or does not even notice you. That's the true. Um, That's true. I, I will say while while we're on the Tony Spider Man thing, which we'll get to again, um, Rhodey asks him, "How old is this guy?" And Tony yeah. does not say he is sixteen years old. Right, Rhodey. He says, "I don't know. I didn't carbon date him." He deflects the question yeah. because if Rhodey finds out that this superhero is a minor, not oh. a signatory, and they're without a right. passport. Rhodey is going to fucking lose it on Tony. Yeah, he is. Right. He holds a rank in the military. He would have the right to say, whoa, right. whoa, whoa. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. And Rhodey is, I, t- uh, Tony is chaotic good. Rhodey is, um, <laughs> Rhodey is uh, absolutely lawful good. So oh, yeah. Would, yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. So we cut to London at Peggy's funeral. We learn that Agent X is actually Sharon Carter, Peggy's niece. This is the first time they learn this in universe. We um, see old man Cap carrying the casket from the back corner. Do, hmm. do we? I mean, there is an old man with the same haircut with white hair. So we see present day Captain America is front right pallbearer. Huh. We see the casket from the back. The back left pallbearer is an old man with the same height and build as fucking Chris Evans with white hair. I don't think it was intentional, but oh my God, I rewound this scene like five times and just watched him walk. And I thought, you know, if I was an old man and I knew that my young man version of myself was Paul Bearer, I would definitely want to be on the opposite side. (laughs) Yeah. Well, and we're led, yeah, at the end of Endgame, we're led to believe that he finished out the autumn of his years with Peggy. Yeah. Yeah. So that they were either married or close when she passed. It, it makes me wonder if if during the funeral or before the funeral, while they're having the private viewing part of the funeral, before the pallbearers carried her into the whole chapel, if old Cap winked at him and went, hey, man, say nothing. Don't worry. We'll figure it out. Have fun in space. Um, and that's it. You know. Wow. Um, Sorry. That's just my tinfoil hat. Yeah, yeah. 
I like that's it. wow. There's Brett there's Tommy is so fun. Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, you and I had a very long conversation slash argument about whether Cap going back in time and living with Peggy was a viable thing for him to do with the TVA existing. <laughs> um, but uh, I think so, that it always had to happen. I think it did too. And my argument was that he didn't create, he, he it created a branch universe, but not one that was ever going to redline and not one yeah. that was ever going to cause us to get a Kang. But I don't know. That's, that's, that's an end game discussion. Possibly. Yeah. We'll get there. We'll get there yeah. again. I'm sure multiple times throughout end game. Yeah. So, um, yeah, Sharon Carter gives a eulogy that's strangely pertinent to Steve's current situation. And uh, one of the greatest Captain America quotes ever written. Yes. That you plant yourself like a tree and you say, no, you move. That is one of the best single page Captain America quotes I've ever read. Yeah, that shit, I was like moved in the movie theater that they used that line. I was like, oh, my God, I can't believe they're having Cap hear this. This is cool. Yeah. Um. So uh, afterwards, Natasha, who was also at the funeral, talks to Cap about the Accords. He tells her he's not going to sign. We cut to Vienna at the signing of the Accords. Natasha meets T'Challa. I just, I just want to say about Ka- uh, Widow showing up. She just shows up because she wants to be with her friend. I, that is yeah. incredible character development. And just she's a good person and a good friend to Steve. That's all. Absolutely. Yeah. I, think, I feel like Natasha and Steve had such a... Um, special relationship in these films. Um, mm-hmm. I feel like that's one thing that really, that um, I don't want to say drop the ball, but that was, it's sad that we didn't get a um, closure in the end game on their relationship. Yeah. Or, or even in black widow, I wish that he had made an appearance in black widow yeah. or something to just kind of mm-hmm. tie that up. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's, it's incredible that she's just there. Also, I, this is a Natasha moment. We're about to get to a bunch of Natasha scenes. She is the one reasonable person out of the entire group of the Avengers. Yes. Mm-hmm. She's almost the anti Tony. Yeah. Well, and she, she sides with Tony because her, her response is look, we got to sign so that we can have our hand on the wheel period. And, the, and also that's what I mean by the anti Tony. Like he has to be forced to look at his past. She has the ledger that is always present in her mind. She knows the bad that she's done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so she knows all you, you can't go back. So you have to do good. Tony does good when it fits. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. When it looks good. Yeah. yeah. So, all right. Uh, we meet T'Challa, Prince of Wakanda, and King, Ch- King T'Chaka. Uh, uh, the King- I was going to say, uh, Widow and T'Challa seem to have met before. I think they slept they with do. each other. I'm just Ooh. saying that. Ooh. He's single. She's single. Ed- Head cannon. Um, yep. Yeah. They, they so, like wink and nod at each other real hard. <laughs> uh, so uh, the king uh, starts to give a speech. The bomb goes off in the street, killing the king and others. Then we uh, cut to London. Sharon and Cap are flirting. Are they in London still? This is unclear to me. Hmm. I uh, thought no, they they're in ended Vienna. Up in Vienna. This they is went, in Vienna. Because isn't what well, Cap's at this point is still wearing the funeral suit. No, Cap is in Vienna. He is watching Widow while he's on the phone. No, with no, her. no. That's afterwards. He's After with, the bombing. He's with Sharon Carter. The bombing happens. Then he's with Sharon Carter in a hotel and they find out about the bombing and he's still in his funeral suit. Hmm. And then hmm. we cut back to Natasha and, and Black Panther. Well, Natasha and T'Challa. And then we cut to Cap calling her and watching. Interesting. It's also, it's also his flying suit <laughs> when, he, when he flies commercial. So, I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's possible they went straight from the funeral to Vienna. That's not impossible. That was, was what I, I, I guessed because he's there moments after the bomb. Yeah. So, all right. So, um... They uh, Sharon has to go help with the cleanup with whatever agency she's currently working for. That's kind of CIA, I guess. Uh, yeah, she says the CIA has me stationed. Ah, uh, that's right. In Eastern Europe or or wherever she says. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. T'Challa tells Natasha that he's, um, he's the king now, and he's gonna go get revenge for his father's death. He puts on the uh, Black Panther ring. Um, Dude, his his running free in the green veld quote the spiritual Ooh. warrior thing 
cool. Ooh, what a great way yeah. to introduce the Black Panther part of totally. T'Challa. You know, and he's, he looks he's, so good on screen. He's savvy ah. as a politician, even though he's kind of new to it. But then mm-hmm. we see him like, no, I'll kill him myself. You know, my father's not dead. He's in Valhalla kind of thing. Well, yeah, but right. then he's like, or oh, that's what my father believes. <laughs> he like kind of walks it back a little bit of whether he's sure of that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So because well, uh, he hasn't been yet. I guess. Yeah. Well, has, hasn't. Well, he? no, I, mean, I guess he, has, he is he the has, Black Panther. So he huh. would have had to have gone there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah. Cap calls Natasha. He's planning on capturing Bucky himself. She tells him that if he does, he'll be considered a criminal. Uh, now that the accords are in effect, uh, Sharon passes Cap and Sam a tip about Bucky's location that they discovered. Uh, meanwhile, Zemo is in a hotel in Vienna enjoying some bacon and coffee. <laughs> yeah. And, and we see his uh, device that we do not know what it is at that moment. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, cut to Romania. Bucky is buying some plums in hiding. So I love this, Bucky buying plums. This is the movie where every single person wears a logoless baseball cap and a hoodie and sunglasses. Yep. This is the one that like really sent that that MCU trope over the edge. What's what's the line from Ant-Man 2? It's like we I forget what he says cuz he comments on that cuz they're all wearing this the uniform. Yeah. yeah. It's like, is this actually, is this actually more discreet? It's like, we look like we're going to a baseball game. I think is what he says. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we look like ourselves, where, but. Where, where do you even buy a, where do you even buy a logoless baseball cap? Oh, well, you can get them. <laughs> At a shop. Store, yeah. Yeah. yeah all right. <laughs> I've had some custom hats. Um, so, all right. Uh, Cap arrives um, at Bucky's apartment just moments before the authorities do, the CIA, I assume. Bucky runs. uh, He gets chased by Cap, the CIA, and Black Panther. I think it was Interpol. Inter. Oh, yeah. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And Black Panther. This is our first appearance of him in the suit. Uh, After an extended chase sequence, they're all captured by uh, Interpol with war machine it's revealed that black panther is t'challa this action sequence is incredible the fact that we see three super powered people running faster than cars this Mm -hmm. is the first i think this is the first and only time besides maybe infinity war where we see them running yeah um it's not quicksilver it's not the flash it is just right impressive yes it looks great (laughs) That looks great. There was a. This is the action sequence where there was a couple moments prior to the tunnel and the cars when they were jumping from the buildings and down to the ground mm-hmm. that I could kind of see the wire work. Oh, huh. like like they were a little light, like yeah. they would kind of like daintily land on the ground instead of like having like a big like thunk, which it felt like they maybe should have had. Um, but uh. Um, outside of those couple tiny little seams in the action, this scene is amazing. Yeah, and, it's yeah, a good the, scene. the running faster than the cars is incredible. Cap steals a car from a dude. Yeah, he, he just throws him out. He doesn't yeah. like. He doesn't, doesn't apologize. Like, he anything. just throws the dude out and gets in and drives away. Well, and we learned in Winter Soldier, I learned to steal a car in Nazi Germany. And this is just a revisiting of him. Like, yeah, sometimes you got to take a car, you know? Sometimes you do. But, but again, to illustrate why he can't be bound by these accords. Like, sometimes well, you got to throw a dude out of his car. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I just want to say, I because the action sequences, nothing happens. They just punch stuff until they all stop. But yeah. the way these sh- these scenes are shot and blocked and, and designed, it shows their character, each of them, yeah. you know? With each choice that they make, I mean, Bucky stealing the motorcycle and spinning it around and then riding away on it is totally. the most badass shit I've ever seen. It's so ridiculous. Yeah, it is. This is absolutely incredible. Um, so, all right. Um, we, uh, back at the Avengers compound, we discover that the Vision has been tasked with keeping Wanda from leaving and making some uh, paprikash. <laughs> I think of when Harry misses. Yeah, every time, every time. Um, yeah, 
I just had uh, paprikash for the first time uh, Friday. Uh, it was uh, the lunch, school lunch on Friday. Oh. I've never had paprikash. How is it? It was good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad. You I always that. assumed it was like borscht, but I don't know. Um, it was uh, mostly. Uh, um, I'm sorry, uh, seasoned chicken. Mm. Ah, okay. Um, all right. So uh, we cut back to Berlin. Bucky is now in custody. <laughs> He's in some sort of pod. Um, <laughs> yeah. Tony tries to convince Steve to uh, sign the accords. Uh, he almost does it, but after learning Wanda is a prisoner, he refuses. We meet uh, CIA agent Everett K. Ross, a.k.a. Bilbo Baggins, a.k.a. Arthur Dent, um, who is in charge of the situation. Who's not related to Thunderbolt Ross, I assume, or maybe he's his nephew. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I just thought that for the first time. Yeah. I forgot yeah. he was Ross. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's a pretty common last name. It could just be one of those oh. things like Smith. Or, yeah. yeah. Well, and he was probably, maybe he was a comic character. So yeah. Kept I'm pretty sure he is a comic book character. Yeah. Um, so, uh, and then impersonating a psychiatrist sent to interview Bucky, Zemo comes in. He says the magic words and activates Bucky's brainwashing. <laughs> please and thank you. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, please be the Winter Soldier. Thank you. Thank you. Magic <laughs> it's words. Re it's really cool to see Bucky fight the words. That's yeah. just, yeah, I thought that was nice uh, that he is fighting the whole the whole way through. Mm -hmm. He's not yeah. just a willing participant at this point. Yeah, exactly. Um, then, yeah. all right. So, uh, even though he doesn't remember everything yet, he doesn't remember. He doesn't remember Steve at this point. Um, so, all right. So, uh, he questions well, Bucky. Uh, he kind of does because when they see each other in the apartment, he asks him, "Do you know who I am?" And he goes, "I read about you in a museum." And Steve immediately responds, "You're lying." Mm. So he may okay. actually remember him. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. So uh, Zemo. Uh, questions him about 1991, then sends him on a rampage to cover his own escape. In the mayhem, Steve stops Bucky. <laughs> he stops his helicopter, showing off the like the <laughs> biggest guns ever put on screen. <laughs> like, oh yeah. my god! He looks good doing it. Fucking cap! I loved Tony's uh, Iron Man fingerless glove. Yes. <laughs> like a virgin. I just love the surprise as he catches that bullet. <laughs> oh, like that's a like I'm like I don't have my suit. This is the closest to death I've come since I was kidnapped. Like Well, and also suit. you were gonna shoot me in the face. He looks at him like that. Like, yeah. Whoa. Robert Downey Jr. is so fucking good. Um yeah. in the uh mayhem, uh Zemo does escape undetected. In hiding, Cap and Sam question Bucky. <laughs> he has the arm in the clamp <laughs> to keep him in place. Mm -hmm. um, uh, this was our uh, after credit sequence from Ant-Man. Mm -hmm. um, he explains that Zemo is the real Vienna bomber. And uh, <laughs> a Vienna sausage, if you will. And why... <laughs> <laughs> and wanted the location of the Siberian Hydra base where other brainwashed winter soldiers are kept in cryogenic sleep. And he admits that he knows who Steve is. Yeah. yeah. Again, you wore newspapers in your shoes. Yes. Can't read about that in a museum. Mm -hmm. We get a 1991 flashback where it's uh, shown that the other winter soldiers were much more aggressive and uncontrollable than Bucky. Well, because uh, they were Hydra's top assassins before mm -hmm. they got the serum. Right. Already yeah. bad people. Yeah. They could yeah. already topple governments before they got mm -hmm. yeah. the serum. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. They were so bad that Hydra basically didn't use them after they serumed them. Like, yeah. That's saying something. Uh, Sam and Cap decide they're going to stop Zemo themselves, but they're going to call on a few friends first, ones that haven't signed the accords. Meanwhile, Thunderbolt Ross. <laughs> Every time I say that, 
I feel like I'm either talking about like uh, like <laughs> a, a, a baseball pitcher. <laughs> yeah, a, yeah, exactly. A, a like a sports guy or like somebody from like <clears throat> like somebody like a Bruce Reynolds character from the seventies. <laughs> <laughs> um, he wants Cap taken in, but Tony convinces him to let the Avengers capture Stephen Bucky. Tony decides they need some extra help too. Cut to Queens, New York. Alt J's left hand free place. The best introduction for a character. Oh ever. my god! Yeah, I, I in the theater. I remember Queens came on the screen and yes. people just started and, cheering. Yes. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, Tony arrives at the apartment of one Peter Parker, who's been doing the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man thing. I love that we don't have to see Uncle Ben die again. <laughs> I'm so happy. I loved that uh, Tony asked about, he's like, what's up with the walking up the walls? And Peter says, long story. I was, I swear he was about to say I was bitten by a radioactive spider and Tony cuts him off. I, yeah. I, I love that they yeah. did that. Yeah. Cause Tony's like, don't interrupt my grooming. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's, there are so many conscious choices in this moment that, yeah, yeah, they just blow through all of the necessary Spider-Man introductions to get us to, cool, you want to go to Germany? Well, right. yeah. I mean, because at, at this point, we're, 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 you know, 50 years, multiple cartoon series and five movies into knowing who Spider-Man is. We don't need to see it again. Right. Well, Another we, difference with DC. We introduced that he swings on webs, has heightened senses, and has incredible strength. Yes. That's all we and, need to know. And a brain for science. Yeah, yes. and he's and a teenager who does technology. Poor and resourceful. Oh, yeah. and they confirm that he makes his own webs. Yeah. Yes. Um, I saw there was a tweet just the other day I saw that was like, why is Spider-Man so popular with uh, people or uh, with young people. And it's like, <laughs> because he fights crime, then has to go home and see an eviction notice on his door. And yeah. go to high school. Yeah. He even says that to Tony, like, well, what am I supposed to do? Like I could join the football team now that I'm better than everyone else. But he's like, but I wasn't a football player before. So I can't. Yeah. You know. he wa- Sp- Peter Parker gets w- what being a superhero is. Specifically, the, well, I guess all the Peter Parkers we've seen on screen, I feel like, better than any other character ever. Yep. Oh, yeah. Just protecting yeah. the neighborhood, man. Better yeah. than Cap, even. Hell, yeah. Just, Cap is just a Boy Scout, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's he a has no he's yeah. Superman light. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Peter Parker will bend the rules if he needs to. He doesn't, mm-hmm. that's not the thing, but he's always going to do the right thing. Yeah. Um, so, all right. Uh, yeah. So he recruits, <laughs> he recruits Peter to help fight, uh, Stephen Bucky, uh, cut to Avengers headquarters. Clint arrives. Hawkeye trying to fight vision is the funniest thing ever. I love it. It says a lot yeah. about Hawkeye's character. Yeah. Now that I like Hawkeye, it's awesome. <laughs> it's funny how it was just like me just refusing, but like, I really like him now. And so his performance throughout this is great. You know, he's like, I wasn't yeah. involved, but I have a feeling I wouldn't, you know, since I was a government assassin, I don't know if maybe uh, it's yeah. the right thing to do. No, no. Well, if, he, if, he has a plan and he executes it. Well, and yeah. at this point, psycho assassins. He's yeah. trying to stop psycho assassins. Anything right. for the goal. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And uh, honestly, um, anybody who hasn't watched the Hawkeye series, watch it. It changes everything i felt about that character same here yeah um so uh it, it even kind of changes how i feel about jeremy renner a little yeah he's still a fucking weirdo he's <laughs> on a yeah. show right now on paramount the mayor of kingstown and he's pretty damn good in it anyway um so all right uh we then so yeah uh with wanda's help they are able to uh, temporarily overpower vision and escape. Meanwhile, Black Widow convinces Black Panther to help their side out. Um, well, I, I just want to say with Wanda, we established that she can control the stone. This is a this is a, a mm. small stepping stone to Infinity War. Yeah, good point. Wanda is with what we have seen since this, especially through WandaVision, she is so so incredibly unaware of what her power is. It's incredible. In this. Yeah. 
They're yeah, she's probably the most powerful so far. Easily. Easily. Oh yeah. Um yeah. I th- sh- I mean Wanda in her full power could have taken Thanos. I think she literally down. almost 1v1 Thanos. That's why Thanos yeah. panicked and called in the Reign of Fire thing. She yes. put a whole city into a spell. Yeah. yeah like a lasting spell. <laughs> yeah, it went on for weeks. Yeah. On accident. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, all right. So Sharon meets with Cap. She sneaked their gear out for them. Um, Cap makes out with his old girlfriend's niece for a little bit. Maybe um, his niece. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. Oh, yep. no. His oh, future no. past niece somehow. Oh, I hadn't thought about that. <laughs> niece of future past. <laughs> uh um so uh this uh, we uh we so, uh, sam and bucky have so much chemistry here hating each other that uh-huh. they made an entire series about them yeah yeah will, will you, you move the, will you move the seat forward no no <laughs> yeah. the two of them in that car man i could watch that scene on repeat for years. that and yeah. then there's the moment where they're like laying on the concrete like both in, uh, in spider-man's webs and he's like i hate you <laughs> you couldn't have opened with that yeah, yeah. Right. they knew they had a buddy yeah oh, they are great they are great uh so all right they uh they meet up with clint who's brought uh back up including scott lang ant-man uh, their plan is to steal a Quinjet and fly to Siberia to stop Zemo. <laughs> uh, they are met at the airport by Tony and his team. And, and that's I'll just we- quickly say, again, as a difference between the DC universe, he either bought that abandoned airport or cleared out the airport. I can't remember what he said. You, can, you but- can hear at the beginning that, they, that they're evacuating the airport. Right. So yeah. he knows there's going to be a showdown and he knows there's going to be destruction and he gets everybody out of the way beforehand. It's just a nice little touch. Yeah. So uh, the, the first time we see Cap and Tony talk, it's jovial friendly. The second time with the pins, I don't want to split up the set thing. Mm-hmm. It's head to head, butting heads. And this time, Tony is straight up threatening Cap. Yes. And then we get their first violent interaction, which is violence light. It's fun. There's yeah. banter the whole time. We mm-hmm. get underoos and like all of that stuff. Yeah. 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 And it's like, also oh. subtly, um, it's this kind of a showdown that the accords are, you know, sort of yeah. that's what the thing is. Like, you guys need to be checked, man. Like, look what look what you can do. Just I don't know. Well, yeah, <laughs> just they wreck cause- an airport in an afternoon. <laughs> They right. cause, and your they powers ca- that you have just they, mm. they cause hundreds of millions of dollars worth of damage just here <laughs> yep. in an empty airport. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. So um the we get the big big fight. Um the, uh, and then in the end, they're basically pretty evenly matched. Sam realizes they can't all make it. So uh Cap and Bucky are gonna get to the jet while the rest of them keep uh, Team Tony distracted. Um even he's gonna so. tear himself apart. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> or he's he's gonna tear himself in half. So he says, like, what? He's confused. Yeah. Uh um, this is like set this is such a great Spidey. Well, it sets that up because and, and it always works. Do you know what I mean? Like he uh, same with when he's on with Ebony Maw on that machine or on that ship, and he yeah. does the alien. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? He's he's usually successful. But he's just so goofy and cute when he's talking about the really old movie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 But he was the one to think of that. It's not just because he has webs. He's like, you got to bring this giant thing down. Yeah. No. Yeah. Peter. Peter 100 percent holds his own with all of these veterans. Like, and while also being like the most charming character in the entire movie. You have a metal arm. That's so cool. That's so cool. Well, and Sam, have you ever been in a fight before? There's usually not this much talking. <laughs> yeah. Sp- Spider-Man talks the entire time he's fighting anybody. Yeah, yeah he never stops. That's just, yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, so, all right. Uh, even though uh, there's, uh, they're being distracted by Giant Man. This is also our introduction to Giant Man. Um, <laughs> I love that at the end. Anyone have any orange slices? <laughs> yeah. Or, well, and Tony's, does anybody on our side have any... Uh, disturbing, uh, surprising oh, powers sorry. that they forgot Miraculous. to disclose. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, so yeah, um, they only get to the Quinjet because Natasha switched sides at the last moment and helps them by holding Black Panther off. Uh, 
During the Jets' escape, Rhodey is injured by some friendly fire from Vision. This is also Tony's fault. Yeah, mm -hmm. hundred percent. Yeah. Um, meanwhile, and also well, Rhodey's fault. And also Rhodey. Yeah. 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 This is yeah. the consequences of their actions. Yeah. This is not Sam's fault. <laughs> Sam dodging that blast from Vision is one hundred percent what you would expect a person to try to do. Yeah. Which um, also is pretty impressive. He moved faster than the speed of light. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Well, let's face it. In movies, the speed of light is very slow. Very it's slow. well, it's it's whatever you need it to be. <laughs> exactly. Right. Um, meanwhile, <laughs> in Russia, Zima, 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 mm, Baron Zima. Zima. <laughs> <laughs> He's the heir to the Zima. <laughs> he got Zima, into a, <laughs> the Zima fortune. <laughs> he got into a lot of chicks in the nineties. A beverage, ah, a beverage that hasn't been made in twenty five years. He's still living out the residuals. Yeah, Zemo makes sure the body of the actual residuals, <laughs> the body of the actual psychologist. Nowadays, it's like we sold a case. Yeah, just that's exactly. That's gone now again. Uh, Zemo makes sure the body of the actual psychologist that he impersonated is discovered back in Vienna. Joe Russo. Mean yeah. That's a Joe Russo cameo. It's the oh, first he's one. the body? Yeah, yeah. Oh, ah, nice. We um, never see Anthony Russo, but we see Joe Russo twice in these movies. Mm. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. In 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 uh, Endgame, he's in the uh, support group, right? Yeah. And Jim Joe Starling. Russo's kids are all of the children in the MCU. Yeah. Only Russo children live in this universe. Yeah, and they're kind of weird looking. <laughs> I hate to say. <laughs> was, it the, was it the Winter Soldier that he was the doctor? Um, hmm. Maybe. Yeah, I'm know. not sure. But daughter, we've, seen, we've seen him before. Ah, mm -hmm. So I'm um, back with Tony. Uh, Rhodey's paralyzed from the waist down. And then Tony discovers evidence that Bucky was framed by Zemo. The rest of Team Cap uh, was put into uh, the Supermax prison off the coast um, called The Raft. Uh, Tony visits them and convinces Sam to tell him where Cap and Bucky are headed to. Uh, Tony leaves and secretly heads out alone to find them. T'Challa tracks Tony and follows him. It's interesting that Sam divulges the information to Tony. Like that, that just was an interesting character moment where he's like, all right, I'd have to tell this dude because this is the only way that they're going to be yeah. successful. Yeah. Even if the whole of the UN and Interpol and the CIA show up, that's a good thing. Right. Because they're yeah. fighting psycho assassins. Yes. Yeah. yeah. He doesn't think Cap and Bucky can take all the sa the assassins. And he's completely unaware of this um, dirty secret that's about to be revealed that and Nemo knows, Steve knows, yeah. Bucky yep. knows. So yeah. um, Cap and Bucky arrive in Siberia at the Hydra base, finally, where Tony <laughs> arrives minutes later, despite doing all that other stuff. Now, they wandered the, the facility for hours. <laughs> Possibly days. <laughs> they took the tour. Yes. Um, yeah, Tony tells them he knows the truth. They strike a truce and enter the facility to find out that the other Winter Soldiers have all been killed by Zemo already. Zemo, I think this is great. He's like, you think I wanted more of you? Right. Yeah. And he knew what you were saying, that they were already fucked up people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's like, I can't control them. Yeah, they had but no idea what Zemo's motivation was. It, it shows... So hard. They had mm -hmm. no idea what he wanted. That was a cool um, twist. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Zemo reveals that his motivation for everything is that his family was killed in Sokovia. His plan was to break up the Avengers. Um, I argue Zemo won. He just straight up won. Oh, yeah, absolutely. He yeah. He got them yeah. to and tear he, themselves apart. And he gets to gloat from a prison cell, and he is still so satisfied with himself. 100%. Yeah. And, and he, if Thanos hadn't showed up, he would have won forever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, right. So, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Thanos <laughs> is the only thing that brought the Avengers that back brought together. brought everyone together. Yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, he shows them security footage, revealing that the car Bucky stopped in 1991 was being driven by Tony's parents. Bucky murdered them and then staged it as a car crash. And it's a uh, it's important that um, you know Tony flatly says his motivation is he killed my mom. Like he knew yeah. somebody was probably going to kill Howard at some point because he was a warmonger, you know. So it's like 
yeah, that was going to happen. But my mom has nothing to do with any of this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, I like it's one hundred percent personal. It's mm-hmm. uh, yeah, it's it's yeah, it is. It, oh, and the way his face, oh my god, the acting is brilliant without a word yeah. spoken. But when he's asked Steve, "Did you know?" You know, because mm-hmm. they talk about constantly how he knew his dad. Right. Yeah. So, so this is this is the part where I was trying to figure out how did Cap know? Because they never ever discuss it at any point in this film. Yeah. And, and I had to Google it. The way Cap knew was because in um, Winter Soldier, uh, the, when they're in the underground Hydra base, there's a single news article wherein it's uh, they they suggest that Hydra killed um, Howard Stark. Um, hmm, yeah. uh, what's and his face? Could... The computer dude. Um, Arnon Zola. 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 Zola make Zola makes a small reference that just suggests that Howard and uh, Mrs. Stark were killed well, by Hydra. You believe Steve when he he doesn't he admits he doesn't know all of it, but yeah. he knew. Yeah, you know he's he probably he, debriefed <laughs> quite he, a bit because again he, he worked with Stark. Right. Well, he didn't know. Well, yeah, he didn't know. He didn't know it was Bucky, but that <laughs> on screen that is the only place where it's referenced prior to gotcha. this moment. So. Um, <laughs> thank you, Al, for that. Yeah, like he probably did not. He probably knew the Winter <laughs> Soldier killed Howard Stark, but he probably didn't know that he also killed his mom unnecessarily. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, he says he didn't know it was Bucky. So he knew it was Hydra, but he didn't okay. know Bucky was involved. Fair enough. Uh, yeah. So um, and that's and because, yeah, I, I was just wondering how he knew it was Hydra. And that's that's what it uh turns out. Um. Oh yeah, and Andrea just mentioned that Howard recognizes Bucky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sergeant Barnes. Yeah. yeah. Um. So all right. Uh. So they we get the big fight between the three of them. Um. Incredible. The yeah, this fight was great. Incredible showdown. Yeah, it is. Evenly matched, but again, like I was saying, like you're rooting for every one of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That is just powerful storytelling. I did as much as I love Batman and growing up. Like I did not care at all. Batman v Superman. Like oh god, not even a I little. Didn't care. Yeah. It was so no. boring. And the way they fought didn't make as much sense as this. Like we right. see that Tony is Tony's suit is being disabled piece by piece. Uh huh. Because and they Cal know how to do it. Yeah. 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 Exactly. And everyone using the shield. Yes. Badass. Oh mm-hmm. my God. Yes. The shield gets passed around like crazy. Um, and that, well, yeah. And then in the end, after Cap finally uses the shield to disable the arc reactor. And looks like he's going to behead Tony Stark. Yeah. yeah. It looks like that's what he's going to do. Exactly. But, but yeah. he doesn't. He doesn't. And he because, stops. Yeah. He uses it to disable the arc reactor. Um, and it's Tony, like, did he stop stop because it's Tony, or did he stop because he's Cap? Yes, that's interesting. That is, yeah. that's a really that's a good, good question. question. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, Tony says, "The shield be- belongs to my father. <laughs> it, mm-hmm. th- you don't deserve it." And we yeah. see it damaged because, of course, it was damaged by vibranium claws. Yes, the, the only Panthers. thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Pretty cool. So, so um, yeah, I've uh, forgotten that he. Uh, left the shield behind. Yeah. Mm. Until seeing this again. I think I forgot to. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, and we get an entire movie where Cap does not use this shield as a result of this. Right. That is and, so well established. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. In well, fact, I mean, it's, that was. Um, it's Black Panther who later says, and get this mana shield. That's yeah. a very. Yeah. Became one of the well, most famous lines from Infinity War. And the olive branch in Endgame is the shield. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, so, all right. Uh, he and Bucky leave. They're going on the lamb, satisfied that he's avenged his family's death in Sokovia. Zemo attempts suicide, but he gets stopped by T'Challa, who's decided he will no longer let vengeance consume him. He has an entire arc in this movie. Oh yeah, so many do. It's incredible. Um, so uh, we cut to a prison. Zemo tells Agent Ross that all his plans worked out. He's satisfied with winning. He won the movie, straight up. Um, back at the Avengers compound, Rhodey gets exoskeleton legs. We get our Stanley cameo. 
He delivers a package to Tony, which contains a letter from Steve. Tony to Stank. Tony. Yeah, Tony yeah. Stank. <laughs> and a burner phone. This is the cameo that he references in uh, Guardians 2 also, where he says, I was a FedEx guy one time. Oh, That's yeah. right. Um, yeah, there's a burner phone in case uh, Steve needs to, uh, con- or in case Tony needs to contact Steve. Steve apologizes for not telling Tony about his parents. Uh, meanwhile, Steve breaks in out all the uh, captured Avengers out of the raft. I, I'm assuming with the help of Black Widow, because yeah. they show up in Infinity War together. Absolutely. Yeah. With the help yeah. of Black Widow and possibly Black Panther. <laughs> I don't know about that, though. Possibly. Yeah. You got to um, fly to that place somehow. Yeah, exactly. Um, in a mid credit sequence, uh, Bucky... Uh, who's uh, now hanging out in Wakanda, decides to go back to sleep for a while. I would do. Yeah, <laughs> I if I had the choice. Yeah. Until a cure for his brainwashing is found. And then in the final credit sequence, Peter gets to check out uh, the new tech he got from Tony. And that is Captain America Civil War. I have a cure for his brainwashing. Burn that stupid book. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> yes. Uh, lose the instruction manual. Um, All right. So I have a few minor unanswered questions we didn't get to. Um, who was the raft built for? I mean, there's no super criminals living in the MCU. They all die every time the Avengers <laughs> fight them. I think it was preemptive. I think it was I, for them. It was for the Avengers, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Um, ha, let's see. Uh... It's mentioned several times in uh, Agents of Shield. Yeah. Oh, that's right. We've got in, in the and things in AOS Agent, that. Well, like yeah. you said, a black site. Yeah, Agents of Shield has been decanonized, but oh. you know, um, as anyway. far as MCU goes. Okay. Well, I mean, multiversed. I guess we can say at this yeah. point, nothing's decanonized. It's multiversed. It's multiverse. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, um, how did? they find out that they were going to be at the airport. How did Natasha and Tony find out that Cap and Bucky were going to be at the airport? That's never mentioned that I could find, and I wrote, wound it back a few oh. times. Yeah, why did yeah, they was, meet at the airport yeah. also? It's a weird spot. Because it was abandoned? No, no, well, no, no. They were, they were evacuating the airport. the airport when Tony arrived. Tony arrived and had them evacuate the airport. So, um, yeah, that's that's one thing that I couldn't find. A, yeah. An answer for they all got an evite yeah it was on a shared calendar um <laughs> uh let's see um oh i love that sam is obsessed with people's animal costume themes like yeah. bird costume so do you like cats everyone's got a gimmick <laughs> bird um, costume. yeah um and the final one so a FedEx truck can just drive up to Avengers headquarters and knock on the door. <laughs> Anyone there's, can, no, is, there's no gate. <laughs> now they had that installed after Infinity War. Well, yeah, you would buzz in a FedEx. If you were going to do a heist, FedEx truck's pretty good. Oh, yeah. Because everyone wants their package. They'll open the gate. Yeah. So, all right. All right. So um, that's about it. Any final thoughts before we rank this thing, guys? Um, Funny how uh, Spidey referenced... Empire strikes back in the at the airport because this ultimately to me felt like the Empire Strikes Back of the Avenger universe. Absolutely. Well, yeah. 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 Definitely. Well, I think they were expecting Ultron to be, but this this was. Yeah. Well, and this is this is part one of a three part trilogy, I think. This is without this Infinity War and Endgame don't make as much sense. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, they had to assemble. Yeah. yeah. Again. Well, they had to be disassembled to then right be assembled. assembled. Again, yeah. 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 It's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Um, I was happy with the picture. I don't have any questions or yeah. I, I really like it. Me too. I like it a lot. I watch so, it occasionally, so that's why I, you know it went yeah. down easy. But yeah. So, all right. So let's go ahead and rank this thing. Um, top I, twenty, right? I no, top, top five. <laughs> I think this yeah. is better than Winter Soldier. I oh, I do too. I think it's better than Winter Soldier. Um, is it better than Iron Man? Yeah. I mean, arguably, this is the best superhero movie ever made. But I, I don't know. I could, I could be 
persuaded in that direction. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, Iron Man was a great way to introduce. I mean, we were all, I, I don't know. I was surprised that it was so powerful using Iron Man to open the MCU. Yeah. But this movie, there's way more Tony and Steve, and it's really gripping. And yeah. I say go big or go home, number one. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah, it's better <laughs> than the first Avengers. Yeah. Um, Al? Which was a good movie. Uh, this movie had a lot of depth. Uh, I can uh, I can agree to that. All right. Yeah, it I was think... packed full of stuff, and that was never a problem. Yeah. All right. I think we've got it down. Um, oh. We're just... I just wanted one last Batman and Superman comparison to this movie. Uh-huh. Sp- Superman had 42 lines in his movie. Spider-Man mm-hmm. speaks more in this film than the film that has Superman's name in it. Oh, <laughs> my God. Sex. That is... That oh my god, uh, okay. Yep. So yeah, like I said, hey Zach, you can brood in the daylight <laughs> as well. You can also Superman can talk a little bit too. It's fine. Yeah, <laughs> he's not a silent hero, Zach. Yeah, he's, just he's always moralizing. <laughs> yeah, so I gotta our... let Batman v Superman go, man. Yeah, well, it's so, amazing these two came out. It really yeah. is within like. Yeah, a month from each other. So, um, yeah. All right. So there we go. Uh, Civil War is at number one. And we are done with this week, which means next week on Harmless Phosphorescence, we will be watching X-Men Apocalypse. Ouch. Yeah. I have not seen this one. This is one I I, I skip. I haven't seen an X-Men. I haven't seen an X-Men movie past Days of Future Past. This was okay. It's no Days of Future Past, but I don't know. I liked it. So so that'll be interesting. So that's next week, everybody. Thank you for hanging out with us on Harmless Phosphorescence. This has been your host, Throw Smiley. And much like T'Challa, I dress like I do because I like cats. (laughs) I'm Josh Cece, and I'm nursing an electromagnetic headache. Does anybody have any orange slices? I'm Brian Lesh. (laughs) Thanks for thanking of me. I'm Alaric Weber. (laughs) <laughs> uh, we'll see you next time guys bye bye bye